I forgot what we're supposed to be watching. You have to remind me. I have like a mullet. <laughs> I'm live. Hi. I told you we were doing Bees Big today. 119. So much better, Monica. Hi. 119. So much better, Monica. Hi. Hi, Michelle's daughter. I'm feeling a lot better. I still have a like a lingering cough. Hi. I still have like a lingering cough, but it's like so much better. I was like half dead before, for real. I was just a mess. It was so terrible. I've never gotten the flu before. It was my first time. I've never gotten the flu before. It was my first time. Am I all the way? Hi, Vanity. Yeah, I'm, I'm much better. Are you under the weather? Ugh. I never had the flu before in my life. I've never had a fever. I, I don't know why I just said that. I was saying I haven't had coffee in like two weeks because everyone says how coffee just like aggravates it and makes it worse. So I like haven't been drinking coffee. I was like so exhausted. I was like fucking bedridden. It was just too much. I had a horrible fever. It was too much. I've never been sick like that in my life ever. Never. I should have gotten like... I was like, if my fever doesn't break, I had a fever for like two, three days. I was like, if my fever doesn't break, I'm going to the hospital, which I never do. Oh, I have down, I have like down feathers all over this fucking hoodie. So I forgot what we're supposed to be watching. I know we did Casino of Gold last time. I forgot what we were supposed to be watching. Did I not come back? Can you guys see me? Did I not come back? I think I'm like frozen or something. So now YouTube's gonna act up. So now YouTube's gonna act like this. Let me see, hold on. Can you guys see me? Can you guys see me? It's like frozen on my end, I think. Can you guys see me? Should I restart it? Come on, YouTube. I think I'm gonna restart it again. As I rip my hair out, which I know you guys hate. As I rip my hair out, which I know you guys hate. Cause I think it's like frozen or something. It says I'm live, but I don't think I'm really live. I can't see anyone's com I can't see the comments. Let me see. Does it say I'm live on the computer? Oh, is it just my Wi-Fi acting up, period? Now my Wi-Fi on my computer is running slow, too. Hold the phone. Is it just my Wi-Fi acting up, period? Because that would be really irritating. I can't see any comments in the chat. Nothing's popping up. It's really annoying. Okay, it says I'm live now. It says I'm live. Am I gonna have to open it on the damn thing to see the chat? That's weird. Okay, I opened it on my computer and now I'm looking at the chat on my computer. Hi, just Nickel, you said I'm freezing up. I'm looking on the, at the chat on the computer. So weird. Hi, Ruby Runner. Hi, Vanity. Yeah. Hi, Just Nicole. Hi, Chris. Yeah, I'm much, I'm better. 
the talk is this week, Monica. It's this week at California State University Bakersfield. It's this week. It's this Thursday, the 28th. You got a bug from your hubby. Oh, no. Hi, Tim. Hi, Warren. Yeah, we're back. Hi, Mar. For some reason, I can't see the chat on my iPad, but I opened the live stream on my computer, so I see it this way. I'm looking at it this way. Nothing is popping up on my iPad whatsoever. It's really weird. Um, hi, Mar. Yes. Hi, Sponge Dami. I'm feeling much better. Brother was sick. You're feeling under the weather, too. Okay, you guys can see me. What's the question, 119? You guys can still see me? I can't see the chat, but it looks like everybody can see me. Hi, Justin. Oh, you're ripping your hair out as well. Hi. I forgot what we're supposed to be watching. What are we supposed to be watching? Hi. Oh, you changed your name from Umi to Ori. That's your name on Instagram, right? There probably has been an update, but I'm not going to update it right now. And the chat was there at first. Now, all of a sudden, I don't see it. Now, all of a sudden, it's like not popping up. Whatever. I'm just looking at it on the computer. Whatever. As long as you guys can see me, it's whatever. I don't care. I think on the computer anyway, I can leave a comment in the chat. Let's see. Yes, I can. Because when I'm live streaming on the iPad, I can't even leave a comment in the chat. Uh, it's not that windy where I am, no. So I just have the chat open on the computer and as long as I remain live on fucking the iPad, which it looks like I still am, I'm not chirping. I forgot what we're supposed to be watching, though. I'm about to eat a hash brown and an egg biscuit. And I have a caramel frappe. Oh, oh, on Tumblr. I know that was your name somewhere else on Tumblr. I know I've seen that before. No, I was gonna get pancakes. I was gonna get pancakes, but I didn't get pancakes today. I changed my mind at the last minute. And I didn't get pancakes. You guys know I love my pancakes. Uh, it's been raining for like two months in Tennessee and you had some really bad flooding in Nashville. Oh no. Sheba Baby? Sheba Baby? Yeah, I had a caramel frappe. It snowed in Arizona, Monica. I saw that it snowed in fucking Vegas too, in Nevada. I couldn't believe it. I was like, what the fuck? Oh, global warming is wild. It's madness. Sheba Baby? Let me see if I can find a link. Oh, you got fried shrimp and Oreos. Five Guys, I haven't had Five Guys in forever. You ordered Five Guys? Oops, wait. That wasn't what I wanted to do. I never eat at Five Guys because the only thing I can really eat there is like french fries. It sucks because I feel like now I'm not going to be looking at you guys over here. I need to like move my computer over. Let me move it so that I can like see. You guys over here. Hi, soybeans. Ooh, food poisoning. Ouch. Yikes. Tacos. I haven't had tacos in a while. Mind you, we haven't gotten very much snow in New Jersey. Hi, Gary. Oh, yeah, Five Guys is on Uber Eats. Yeah, the climates are changing. I mean, I think they were just being sarcastic. <laughs> We've talked about it. We talked about the show Last Beast Babe. No, I'm not watching that shit. No. I don't watch shit just to be, like, upset by it. I don't hate watch. I don't hate watch things. That's, like, not my thing. And people send me shit all the time, too. And they be like, 
have you seen this? Doesn't it just make you so angry? And I'd be like, well, now that you told me it's going to piss me off, I'm definitely not going to look at it. <clears throat> yeah, the Colombian witch show on Netflix that's like a slave master romance, apparently. What are rolled tacos? A bad hepatitis outbreak in Kentucky? I ain't eaten out anywhere. Yeah, Monica was just joking. I don't think any of us like really believe the world. I mean, maybe some people believe the world is like legitimately ending, which I think there's an argument that could be made for that, but I don't think she was being serious. Hi, Chris. I know somebody. Hi, Richie. Hi, Savannah. I know somebody that was watching Umbrella Academy, but no one can really explain what it's about. Hi, soybeans. You watched when it first came out? Yeah. Mm -mm. I'm not going to watch it, Jess Nickel. I mean, like, whatever. Like, people that want to watch it... I'm not going to watch it. Oh, look. The user formerly known as Ubi posted the rules. Beast baked newbies, welcome in, but come correct. Mods don't play. Come on here with that bullshit. Catch a block quick. No coons, trolls, spammers, disrespect, etc. Read the room and comment. I heard it was a slave master romance. I was like hard pass. What are rolled tacos? I do not hate watch. My friends kept telling me to hate watch Aaliyah. And Whitney movies on Lifetime, and I was like, for what? Right? And they'd be like, Justin, I know you love Whitney. You have to watch it. It's so bad. You're going to get so angry. Why? <laughs> for what? What is the point? <laughs> what is it about? Oh, X-Men? It's like X-Men? Tapitos? Hi, the boy in blue. What was the name of it? Sheba? What was the name of it? Oh, Sheba Baby. There it goes. Let me see. You know, my chat still has not popped back up on the iPad. Hmm. I love witches and magic, but not enough to sit through a slave master romance. People be hate watching and raising their blood pressure for nothing. Hi, Carla. Umbrella Academy is kind of like X-Men. 3% is amazing, Justin. You will love it, I think. I love that show. I'm waiting for season three. Hmm. I also hate when people ask me if I watch, listen to shit I'm not a fan of. Like, everyone knows I don't like Drake, but folk will still ask me if I listen to a new project and I'm not, no. Right, Tim? They'd be like, oh, I know you heard that new Drake song. Uh, why? What's the point? Hi, James Tyrell. Hmm. If I walk into a room and a bunch of people are watching The Last Jedi, then okay. I'll hate watch because it's convenient. But I'm not going to spend gas and money to do that. <laughs> right, Mar. They hating on my life. I probably just need to, like, hard restart the iPad. Remember uh, before Last Beast Big? It wouldn't even turn on at all, remember? Now it's like, it's just like acting up. <clears throat> <coughs> oh, yeah. Gary, I heard Mary J. Blige was on it. I did hear that Mary J. Blige was on it, which piqued my curiosity, I will say. I heard that Mary J. Blige was on it. I watched the first two seasons of 3% and enjoyed it. I co-signed season one of 3%, but haven't seen the second season yet. The second season is not as good as the first season, but there are a couple episodes in the second season that's like some of the best television I've ever seen in my life. Just like amazing writing, amazing Right, exactly. Janae Aiko, like, you don't listen to that shit. Hi, Kendrick. 
Mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige killed it. Mary J. Blige is just okay. You know, Monet would have been a better choice for that role. Mm. Yeah, I heard it's like... I've heard a lot of people make the X-Men comparison of like the kids are like adopted by some super rich dude and raised in a mansion and have powers and go out into the world and some other shit there. <clears throat> My fave character from 3% is Joanna. Let's go. I think a lot of people like jo I feel like most people's favorite character is Joanna. A super rich asshole. I heard, hi, Davy Jones Walker. I heard she did some of her own stunts too. I'm so proud of her. If I hear these artists, it's like on accident. I don't seek to listen to people I'm not a fan of. Yeah, it's really weird. Oh, Ellen Page is on, is on, is on Umbrella Academy? I didn't hear that Ellen Page was on there. I like Ellen Page. Young people with superpowers in a rich ass boarding school. Um, what else? It's like if Professor X shitted on those kids' lives. The show changed a lot from the comic. Oh, it's based on comics. What would you throw? Mm, compare 3% to 3% is like 3% is like if Hunger Games meets mm, it's sort of like Brazilian Hunger Games with a twist and the twist and there's a lot of twists <laughs> and there's a lot of twists Um, okay, well, I like Ellen Page, so, and I wondered what she's been up to, so maybe I'll give it a look, a look-see. Three percent is like Brazilian Hunger Games, sort of, kind of. Mm. Hi, queen. Yes, Ellen Page is really good in the role. Her powers are fucking bomb. Somebody was telling me about Umbrella Academy at work last night. Might check it with a bottle of hot sauce in case it's bad. 3%, I said. It's sort of like Brazilian Hunger Games. Haven't watched season. Hi, Jaren. Haven't watched season two of 3%. First season was a shit. Hi, Niall. Thought it had a divergent feel to it. Yeah, I kind of like... I mean, it's like... Mm. dystopian future or the hunger games part is just because they're participating in games where they are like fighting to the death type shit but they're trying to and they're trying to like get out of like poverty and they but they have to be like really smart Yeah, I've heard of Discord. I've heard of Discord. I'm not on there, but I know some people that are on there. I've had other people suggest it. I might look into it. 3% is Hunger Games meets the Elysium film. That's a good description, Just Nickel. Like, they are extremely fucking poor. Like, they're really poor. And it's basically that... It's basically that, so 3%, the plot of 3% is basically that people have like overthrown the government, sort of. Well, let's just say the government as we know now, loosely. People have like overthrown the government and they've made a new government and like a new like social like structure, hierarchy, wherever, where they devised this test and it's called the process. And the process is designed so that only 3% of like people can pass the test. And basically the 3% of the people that pass the test get to like go live on the offshore where they have like unlimited resources and like access to like, 
like one of the main characters in three percent is like in a wheelchair and they're like oh like if you like get through the process and get to the ostra they can like heal you that part reminded me of elysium a lot they can like heal you like and just everything is like wonderful and amazing on the offshore and everybody lives on the inland which is like favelas and they're like poor and like starving to death and like violence and just like all this shit's going on so everybody's trying to like get through the process and like be part of the three percent and they feel like it's fair that like the 97 percent of the population is like living in fucking squalor because they all had the opportunity the equal opportunity to get through the process and if you don't get through the process like nigga that's on you type shit um let's see i like ellen page two um, what else? Uh, maybe, I know, I crushed it, Mar. I, I crushed it. I did. <laughs> I was hungry. I feel like people, yeah, and it's, it's Brazilian, so it's in Portuguese. And, and, but then, like, but then there's also, so then also, you also have the cause. The cause believes that the process is not fair, that it's not right. And so you have people that join the cause that are trying to bring down the process and they're also trying to like get to the offshore so that they can like bring down the offshore from the inside. And throughout the first season, you don't really know. There's also a little bit of like a spy caper type of plot type thing where like you don't really know who's in the cause and like who's not in the cause. Like you think you know, but like you don't really know. You're not sure. So in addition to just, like, the people trying to, like, get through the process, you also have, like, the cause, like, plot line. There's, like, a lot going on. It's really good. 3% is, like, really good. Yeah, it has subtitles in Portuguese. Mm. I didn't finish You, The Boy in Blue. I started it. The first, like, five or six episodes I liked... But then it just, like, got out of control. And I was just like, why is everybody obsessed with this bitch? This bitch is, like, the motherfucking, um, Sookie Stackhouse of New York or what? Like, she doesn't seem this exceptional for people to be this fucking obsessed with this, like, regular blonde white chick and, like, stalking her. Maybe that's, like, w fucked up to say, but I... Not to say that it was ever believable, but it, like, stopped being, like, believable in any way, shape, or form. Um, we're watching, uh, I think we're going to watch Sheba Baby. I think we're going to watch Sheba Baby. Um, which I think I found a link for. Umbrella Academy sounds like Resident Evil's virus company. It is called that because that's the Umbrella Corporation. I've been watching so many videos of folks playing that game. You was a silly series. <laughs> this Five Guys is hitting. <laughs> you just got fries and a milkshake. Uh, Sponge Dami. 3% is like a metaphor of the world we're living in. Hi, Bailey. No, we didn't start yet. Queen, we didn't start yet. We're watching Sheba Baby. I'm torn right now because I have this insanely cool idea for a story. I should keep it a secret, but I also want to discuss the concept with y'all really badly. See, stuff like that is why it would be nice to have a Discord. Maybe we'll do a Beast Bake Discord. Maybe we'll do a Beast Bake Discord. I think I have a link. Let me see. Oh, did you? Here, yeah, I'm about to... I think... Oh, I, 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 I it is nice being able to put in the chat, isn't it? Um, I know episode one of 3% tripped me out. Right, she's not that great, the boy in blue. She's not, like, Beckalicious. I'm like, really? Like, this bitch is actually kind of dry. I'm back. Somebody just called me and it came through on the iPad. Hold on. Somebody just called me and said, hold on. Somebody just called me and it came through on the iPad. Um, why is he so obsessed with her? Uh, Peach was something else. 
Oh, that's what it was going to be. Get Christy Love. Right. I forgot. Sorry. I forgot. I forgot. And I was like, I can't remember what we're supposed to watch. And then somebody said Shiva Baby. Um, let's see. My mom texted me and my sister saying that shit about the you girl for a week straight. She wasn't having it. Bye, Warren. Um, yeah, I put a link to YouTube. Let's do Get Christy Love next week because I think I already have Sheba Baby up. Maybe a Discord. Maybe we'll get into Discord. Yeah, she's kind of like Bella from Twilight. It's just very like... You're just like, this bitch isn't that fucking popping. Like, why is everybody on her nuts? Um, Peach was a 10. Yes, and I also kind of felt like people was acting like, I don't know. People was acting like Beck was so wonderful and like Peach was such a super huge bitch. And I was like, number one, but Peach was right because like, Joe was a weirdo, and Joe did steal her computer, and he also stole her book. And, like, all the stuff that Peach was saying was, like, absolutely right. So I don't understand why everybody was acting like Peach was, like, wild and out of control. And Peach, like, had all this money, and she was trying to, like, help Beck out, and Beck was like, no, I can't take the money, and da 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 I was like, but that's your friend, like, why? I don't know. There was, like, a lot of shit going on, and I was just like, what the fuck? And the fact that, like, everybody ended up being obsessed with Beck. I was like, why is everyone obsessed with this bitch? Beck was so basic and boring. Yeah, I put a link in the chat. Queen. Queen wants to watch Get Christy Love, guys. And that was on that web... And it was on that website, wasn't it? It'd be the most basic people that have weird shit happen to them. But for real, can we talk about the unhealthy attraction for the stalker character? Even the actor is like, whoa, guys. Right, and I also found that part to be, like, very fucking weird as well. People all acting like... Now, I did think that, like, Beck was, like, basic as fuck, yes. But the fact that people were acting like Beck doesn't deserve Joe. Joe is too good for her. Joe's just trying to help her and look out for her and, like... I wish I had somebody, like, love me as much as, like, Joe loves Beck. And, like, Beck is, like, basic as fuck and doesn't deserve it. I was like, Joe is a stalker. Like, he's stalking this bitch. And he's, like, following her around. And he killed Benji, who, granted, was an asshole. But he killed Benji for no reason. Completely. No reason at all. Like, I was like, he's, like, stalking the bitch. And he's, like, in her apartment and, like, following her and, like, killing people. Like, what the fuck is wrong with y'all? It's really weird. People are fucking weird as fuck. Like, I didn't finish. I didn't finish. I was like, I'm done. Like, I can't. The first few episodes of you were good, but I couldn't finish. Um, Peach was right. Oh, y'all froze. Y'all can't see me. Can y'all see me? Peach was right. Um, oh, it froze. Well, hopefully you guys can see me now. Hopefully you guys can see me now. They stay pushing the most bi regular basic white girls is irresistible. I would feel weird taking my rich friend's money all the time so that part I could understand. No, it wasn't like she was taking her money all the time. Beck was being sexually harassed by her, um, she was, like, a professor's assistant. She was, like, a grad student. She was, like, getting a master's degree in, like, poetry. And she was being sexually harassed by her professor. And her professor tried to, like, remove her from the TA position. But she needed the TA position because the TA position enabled her to have housing. And so... If she had got removed from the position, she wouldn't be able to pay her rent because she didn't have money because she was a student. So her friend Peach was like super rich and her friend offered to help her out with the rent. 
And she was like, no, I can't accept it. It's like, but you're in a situation that's 100% not your fault. And your friend is rich as fuck and offering to help you. She was like, I'll just help you out. Like, if you're going to move to a new apartment, I'll, like, help you out until you, like, find another job and you, like, get back on your feet. I feel like that friends do things like that for one another. I don't understand why people feel like, like, that's inappropriate. Um... Okay, so are we going to do Get Christy Love? Because I just opened up Get Christy Love. Get Christy Love or Sheba Baby. Joe is violent too. Like, he was watching her have sex. He killed people. He broke into her place. He hacked her phone. Hi, world lover. I know, we always, like, mess up on Queen. It always happens. We can do Get Christy Love and then Sheba Baby next week. Joe would kill her mom if he felt that she was in the way. And Joe was like, I'm a nice... And Joe was also like the stereotypical, like, I'm a nice guy. Like, I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. I'm just like doing what's right for Beck. Beck is like surrounded by assholes. And so since I'm a nice guy, I'm not an asshole, even though I'm fucking stalking the bitch and following her and hacking her phone, breaking her in place and watching her and doing all this creepy shit and fucking killing people that I feel like are getting too close to Beck. I'm doing this because I'm a nice guy and I know what's best for her. And all these other people are assholes. Except me. It was, like, very creepy. Killed people up here stealing her phone, collecting her drawers, jacking off outside. Oh, my God. The jacking off outside her house was just, just, it was a lot. Joe was a creep. He stole her phone and was reading all her texts. The, the way that Joe would try and rationalize in his, things in his mind was a hell no. Right. If you support Joe, there's something wrong with you. Um, hi, Queen. Going through her iCloud. He said you're 30 minutes late. We haven't started yet. And I said, I was like, I can't remember what the movie was supposed to be. But it was supposed to be Get Christy Love. It was supposed to be Get Christy Love. And I have the link ready. So we can do Get Christy Love if you guys want. I'll post it. Let me post it. And then you guys can decide. That's the Get Christy Love link. Um, we're talking about you from Netflix. Yes, Peach was also a creep, but like her monetary offer was reasonable. Her monetary offer was reason. I'm just saying her monetary offer was reasonable. Sheba. Hi, Clotilde. I'm a nice guy, therefore I deserve her. Benji was an asshole, but that was her choice. Peach was a stalker too, but she was physically harmless. Yes! After he helped the old lady wear her bags, I was like, this is why I don't like people fucking touching me. Because you don't know what people be doing with their hands, and they try to touch you. He goes, let me help you grab your suitcase. I was like, oh my god, he was just jerking off. That is fucking disgusting. Yes, he jerked it outside of her house, Mar. He was spying on her, watching her through the windows, jerking off outside of her house. It was disgusting. And then this old lady was coming outside with her suitcase, and he picked up the old lady's suitcase and offered to help her carry the suitcase down the stairs. And I was just like, no, you didn't. You was just jerking it off five seconds ago, literally. Yeah, the white knight shit was a cool angle. It seems logical that sickos think like that. But the thing was that people was acting like Joe was like some relatable character and that he was right because of that whole like angle of like Joe is the one that's like looking out for Beck. But Joe is a creepy fucking stalker. And people acting like, well, Beck is basic and like doesn't fucking quote unquote deserve Joe. And it's like, no, you guys are like, taking the side of the stalker, like, rationalizing the stalker's behavior, like, as if his behavior is fucking cool. No. And then, once Peach also turned out to be a stalker, like, the part where Peach was, like, offering her the money and stuff was, like, before you find out that Peach was also a stalker. Once it turned out that Peach was also stalking back was when I stopped watching, because I was just like, okay, this is just too much. Like, why is everybody stalking this bitch? Like, it's weird. Um, I thought 
thought it was interesting showing his perspective. Like, this is how they think. This show sounds creepy and dusty. That's why shaking hands shouldn't be normal. Yeah, she was in a first floor apartment. Nasty wretch. Her huge street level windows. That's why I carried hand sanitizer. He was judging everybody, but he was so creepy. This man sounds like a fucking sick ass lunatic. He was doing it for his own sick delusional reasons. People really thought that they missed the boat big time. A lot of people were saying like, you guys are like missing the whole point of the show. The fact that you're like on Joe's side. Obviously Joe is rationalizing the things that he's doing because he's a fucking sicko. Not for you to be on his side. This is like fanfic turned into a film. Why the fuck did Beck not have any blinds or curtains? Because she's white. Why were they all stalking her? I like Peach. Why does she also have to be crazy? I watched two episodes and reneged. Peach was trying to move Beck all the way to Paris so they could be together. The fuck? Yes, it was like really weird. Like, I'm no, I don't want to see Peach also be a stalker. That's not believable to me. Not to say that any of it is believable, but Peach being Beck's best friend was cool. Like, and Peach was like very suspicious of Joe and she was absolutely correct. And Peach also had her own money and she like had her own shit going on and like all that shit was cool. Her all of a sudden becoming a stalker was very random. And to me, it felt like shitty writing. And it also felt like to me, it also felt like to me that they were doing... I felt like they were also setting up a lot of situations, maybe not intentionally, but I felt like they were setting up situations to make Joe seem like a sympathetic character. Like Benji really was an asshole. And then it turns out that like Peach also really was a stalker, you know, but it's like, no, but like Joe is a stalker. Joe is an asshole. Like stop making everybody around Beck be a creepy weirdo like as if you're giving joe some type of like motivation i didn't like that i'm I'm not gonna finish it i'm not gonna finish it like joe for example is spying on her and he's like talking about how all her friends are like assholes and like this and that and it's like but like joe you don't even really know her like you're stalking her you don't know her you don't know her friends her friends could be like perfectly fine people i felt like the whole point was supposed to be that like joe is a stalker and he's, like, rationalizing the horrible things that he's doing. But then they start, like, putting these, like, plot points in here of, like, Peach really is a creep. And the fat fucking white bitch, like, really is a racist. Like, like okay, you guys, but then you guys act like, why are people on Joe's side? You're making it so that, like, everybody around Beck is, like, out of control. And once, I felt like once they started doing that, like, the whole second half of, like, the show, I felt like took a turn and I stopped watching it. Um, like Monica said, yeah, like I like Peach. Why does she also have to be crazy? And it was like, why is everybody around Beck acting like this? Like Beck is just a regular girl. <laughs> like with as many guys I see walk out the bathroom stall and straight out the door without even looking in the general direction of the sink has me thinking twice about shaking people's hands, letting them touch me. Yeah, there was a lot of weirdness. Hi, Gary. Other Gary. <laughs> There's no way she didn't notice his ass following and watching her. And he was following her everywhere. He was following her to work. He was following her everywhere. And he would just pop up. Like, he, oh, he, like, just so happened to be at the fucking chain, train tracks. And he, like, just so happened to be in this other place. Like, come on. Um... <laughs> Justin. It's because people found Joe attractive. My ass be looking all around whenever I leave the house. Maybe I'm just paranoid. Mm. I thought it was sloppy writing that all of a sudden she was a stalker. It was unlikely. They definitely romanticized Joe on purpose. Yeah. It seemed like the only folks, normal folks around Beck were her other two girlfriends. Hi, Julian. We haven't started yet. Are we watching Get Christy Love or are we watching Sheba Baby? What are we watching? What are we watching? I, I'm a cash, a cashier at work. People are publicly shamelessly gross. 
Joe could only see those things in other people because he is those things. So he recognized all the signs like it was nothing. At least with Peach. Benjo was Benji was him being a psycho nice guy. He was just like when he killed Benji, I was like, why did you kill? There was literally no re there was literally no reason to kill Benji. Even the whole point of like him kidnapping Benji and locking him in the basement. Like, can Benji's an asshole. But, like, a lot of people are assholes. Just because, like, you want to date this bitch and she's dating an asshole, like, does not give you the right to, like, kidnap the nigga and lock him in the basement and, like, kill him. Like, no. <laughs> but then you see these people that are like, Joe was amazing. Joe was just looking out for Beck. Like, Benji really was a dick and, like, he deserved to get killed and, like, Beck doesn't deserve to have somebody like Joe. I was just like, mm, I just, I couldn't finish. So they're trying to justify Joe. Peach was stunning. I love Shane Mitchell. Beck was whack and so was her poetry. Beck was whack and so was her poetry. When she went to the fucking show and the guy started heckling her and he was like, why is everything so sad? Get the singer back. <laughs> Hi, Simone. Are we watching Get Christy Love or are we watching Sheba Baby? Sheba, don't you? Okay, we'll watch Sheba Baby Queen and then we'll do Get Christy Love next week. Okay, all right. Sheba Baby and then Get Christy Love next week. Okay, so we'll start in like two minutes. So since we're going to do Sheba Baby, let me put the link yet again. Sheba Baby. Hi, Owen. Yeah, I'm much I'm feeling much better. Um how many shows or movies have this exact same storyline? It is so repetitive. After watching the show, I feel like Beck being basic was the point. Um Oh, are you describing your idea? Hmm. He also followed her to her dad's festival and he thought it was her sugar daddy. And she fucking seen him there too. And he gave some random ass explanation. I would have been like, this is fucking weird. It's been like three, four times now that I keep running into you places and you keep coming up with these random ass explanations as to why you're in the exact same place that I am all the time. You're obviously fucking following me. Obviously you're following me. Benji saw Joe's face and could have gone to the police. Yeah, but Benji gave Joe the fucking blackmail, like the blackmail stuff. I don't want to like reveal exactly what it was, but like that was like some solid fucking blackmail. That was some solid blackmail. If Benji went to the police about Joe and... Basically, for those of you that haven't seen it, I'm not going to like totally ruin it, even though we are talking about it. But Benji gave Joe video proof evidence of something that like Benji had done. So he was like, now we're even like he was like, you could let me go. And you know that I can't go to the police because like if I go to the police on you, you can like give the police this video. And like, I'm also going to go to jail. Like there was no reason to kill him. There was no reason to kill him. I was like, Why? Just let him go. I thought he was going to let him go. I was like, oh, this nigga's really crazy. Benji deserved a punch in the face, but not death. There's a lot of people like Joe and Apologist. I'm not surprised. I stopped watching after they had sex. Um, <coughs> I'm about to start Sheba Baby. I'm about to start it right now. Play. <clears throat> you know, my comment, my chat never came back up. Joe would rationalize killing a puppy if it was spending too much time with Beck. You know, I read about this recently that apparently this is a thing which I never knew before in life of people being like envious and jealous of pets, of their partner's pets. Isn't that weird? Sheba baby. 
Joe killed Benji because he knew nothing would pop with Beck if that jackass stayed around. No, I, I haven't seen that, Panda. Somebody said they thought it was creepy. All these 70s movies be started so random. They be starting with people like in the middle of a conversation, starting with just a random camel popping up. Joe would rationalize killing a puppy if it was spending too much time with Beck. Yeah, that's Umi. Umi changed his name, Queen. Um, I see. This sounds like um something. The user formerly known as Umi Ori. This sounds like something that I've seen. That's not. I'm not 100% remembering, but I saw something bef like one time that was kind of like that. It was like people that were existing in the same physical plate, like space, but on like different. I'm recalling people like being in the kitchen and being able to talk to like different versions of themselves and see them. You showing up where I am all the time would have been a huge red flag. This is a caramel frappe. I would have been like, are you following me? <laughs> Before they even got together, she had sex with somebody else. And he was like, what? Why? But I could be patient. <clears throat> Peach was on the Joe the whole time. And I was like, is it just because she's a good friend or is she a creep too? That, that was like so extra to me. I was like, why? Just let her be a fucking friend. Benji's plan was smart. There was no reason he needed to die. Oh, you know what? It reminds me of. Have you ever seen the movie um, Another Earth? Have you ever seen that movie? That's fucking what it's making me think of. Have you guys ever seen that movie? Great fucking movie. It had a uh, Jeremy Renner. Is that Jeremy Renner? And. Uh, Not Brie Larson. Some other white bitch that I always get confused with her. And in Another Earth, Another Earth is about the girl, not Brie Larson. The fuck is this bitch name? She, okay, so she, she gets into MIT. She's like a scientist or like an astrophysicist. She gets into MIT. She's like really excited about getting into MIT. She goes out to a party to celebrate getting into MIT and she has a couple drinks and after she leaves the party, they discover that there's like another earth. They like see it and she like leans out of the window to like look at it and she like hits a car and she like kills the people inside and the people inside were Jeremy Renner, I think. It might not be Jeremy Renner, but... The guy, it's like a guy, his wife, and his child inside. And she, like, kills all of them except the guy. And then she goes to jail. And then she gets out of jail. And by the time she gets out of jail, because she goes to jail for, like, a few years. And by the time she gets out of jail, oh, they're, like, fucking up this place. Oh, my God, he threw a chair. By the time she gets out of jail, they've, like, discovered more about the other Earth. And it turns out that, like, the other version of Earth is, like, inhabited with, like, exact replicas of, like, us here on our Earth. But they've, like, made totally different choices. And then they start, like, they say they're going to, like, have a lottery where they're going to, like, give away tickets to go to the other earth so then the girl she's trying to like win ticket a ticket to like get to the other earth because for all she knows the version of her on the other earth never like killed those people and whatever whatever now, i always wondered what she was going to do when she got there like are you going to kill you the other version of yourself but i'm not going to like tell you guys about the rest of the movie it's like a great movie There go Pam. Go ahead, Pam. 
Pam Greer is Sheba, baby. What the fuck? Jealous of a pet. Envious of your partner's pet. Those people are crazy like Joe. <laughs> the way white people love their pets, I'm not surprised. I think my partner's pet is jealous of me. It's hilarious. People end up killing their partner pet, you know, pets in a pot of water. My mom hated Prince for years just because my dad was a fan. The jealousy is real. Mm. They say millennials have more pets because we don't want kids, can't afford them. So we just treat our pets like kids. So I see why someone would get jealous. That reminds me of children of men. Where they, like, can't have kids, so they, like, treat the pets really good. She's carrying a Louis Vuitton purse. <laughs> uh, Sheba Baby, underrated soundtrack. Hi, Tony. It's a displaced jealousy. Then when he died, she became a bigger fan. Oh, your mom and dad. She said she felt guilty. I'm at 6.54. Uh, this song I'm dancing. <laughs> Sheba. Sheba, baby. Children of Men was crazy. Uh, wait. I think I skipped. Oh, yeah, wait. I skipped some... Britt Marling! Thank you, Tony. That's the name of the bitch. Britt Marling. That's her name. I was like, not Brie Larson. Another one. <laughs> Britt Marling. How was she not thrown off by Joe being at the festival? Jealous of a pet. People keep moving the goalposts of crazy. It was an obvious and overt tonal shift when it came out. Peach was a stalker. Right, I stopped watching it. I was like, this is too much. I stopped watching it. If I have to choose between my girl and my dog, well, I'm not getting rid of my dog. That's all I'm saying. I have two dogs. If my dogs don't like you, you have to go. Beck chews gum. Joe, got to get rid of that gum. She's chewing it too long when she should be chewing me. Yeah, this is how Joe thinks. That is exactly how Joe thinks. And people are like, oh my God, Joe just loves Beck so much and Beck doesn't deserve it. She should just spit out the gum. Joe had that toxic ass male savior complex. As soon as he saw her, he was being creepy. Yes, as soon as he saw her, he had this internal monologue that was like, you're wearing a shirt. The shirt is not that low cut, but you don't have a bra on, so you want me to notice your tits, but you don't want me to really look at them because your shirt is not low cut. You don't have on a lot of ostentatious jewelry, but you do have on bracelets that are jingling and making noise, so you want people to notice the noise and like look at you. Like... This was this man's internal monologue from the minute he even saw her, before they had even exchanged even one word. Britt Marling, Another Earth. Beck is fake deep. Trick and get out of here. Mm. 70s movies, 10 minutes of the movie dedicated to walking transportation. That's been like the intro of a lot of these movies, walking. White knighting. They tried to make Joe so conscious. When did Another Earth come out? Oh, years ago. At least 10 years. I like how Fringe did their alternate universe. I loved Fringe. That was, that was my show. I used to be fucking obsessed with that show. The fact that my man could not tell faux Olivia from the real Olivia. He knew that was not his Olivia. He knew that was not his Olivia. And he got her pregnant? I was like, oh no, you're not shit. You're not shit. You need to get um, trapped in the fucking alternate dimension that's like slowly um, disintegrating because you're not shit. And when the real Olivia came back and was like, how did you not know? And she was like, you knew. And then he was like, the other Olivia was like a little bit quicker to smile and a little bit better with a joke. And it was like a part of me knew, but I just like wanted to believe because like... 
she was nicer. It's like, yeah, because she didn't go through the fucking trauma that the real Olivia went through, you fucking asshole. And you got her pregnant, you fucking creep. I was so upset. Astrid was my bitch. I'm at 10 minutes and 52 seconds now. It's like the airplane. Another Earth is not like a light, fun movie, though. It's like a very, it deals like with some really serious issues about like life and death and like guilt. She's like very guilty about what she did. Another Earth, James Tyrell. Uh, Children of Men was crazy. Yeah, I'm behind. Sorry. You guys know me. Ooh, look at this hat Pam got on. Yes. Excuse me. The song playing while Pam was walking was nice. So, what you're describing, Ori, sounds a little bit more like Fringe. Have you seen Fringe? Ha, <laughs> Chris. Ha. <laughs> Children of Men is one of my favorite movies. Mm. I'm pretty sure I was out of breath at the end of Children of Men. A series of unfortunate events, my guilty pleasure on Netflix. I love that shit. I haven't watched the last season that they just put up. Season three or four. I need to watch it. It has Nathan Fillion, who I love. My guilty pleasure on Netflix is probably that Anne of Green Gable show. I like a series of unfortunate events. I got attached to a friend's dog and it recently died. I don't know how pet owners do it. Oh, pets dying it sucks, though, Queen. It does. Mm -hmm. It seems like I quit you at an opportune time. Joe was out of line. There are two types of people in this world. Whoever thinks Joe is a good guy concern me. Um, a series of unfortunate events was my favorite book series as a kid. I'm so disappointed. I was so disappointed in the movie that I didn't even give, give Netflix a shot. The Netflix show is nothing like the movie, Tim. Like, not at all. <laughs> it's a little bit more, um, surreal. And it's also quite theatrical. It kind of reminds me of like a stage like, if they did a stage production of a series of unfortunate events, I think it would have more of a vibe of the Netflix show. And I like the movie. I thought the series of unfortunate events movie was pretty fucking funny. But the show that comes on Netflix is nothing. The first season of the show follows the same plot, more or less, as the movie. But the second season is totally different. And the most recent season that they put, I haven't watched it, but I, I'm sure it's also different. Joe's internal monologue is how rapists think. Yeah, it's like a lot. It's fucking weird. There's more and more studies about how deep the effects of a pet's death can be, even down to genetics. It's wild. I've had a couple pets die, and it's like a bit traumatic. Fringe was so good. I loved it. Fringe is still one of my all-time favorite shows. I want that shit back. Oh, that was my motherfucking show, Fringe. That was my motherfucking show. Um, where are we? Let me talk to Andy. Damn, bitch, can you say hi? This is Sheba, his daughter. Sheba. That's some bullshit. New Olivia was more convenient. Yes, new Olivia looked exactly like his Olivia, but just with less problems. And so he just went with it. Her suit is real nice with Olivia Pope hat. Mm. Ooh. I come home and find my father beating half to death and some sweet-talking nigga threatening his life. 
I love the dialogue in these 70s movies. This dialogue just be what's up. No, I never seen Big Mouth. That's about like the brace face, right, girl? You haven't seen Fringe? Ori, okay, so you should watch Fringe. They have an alternate universe timeline that you might find inspirational. They And they know about the alternate universes. And in, well, in Fringe, they know about the alternate universes after a certain point, And people are also able to like travel back and forth. But the fact that there's alternate universes and the machine that they use... It's sort of like making like the fabric of like the time space continuum like fragile. And so they have in these like, oh, okay, oh, okay. Uh, like a, like time storms. And they have to like encase shit in this like yellow amber shit. You should watch it. You'd probably like it. Neil Patrick Harris did a better job than Jim Carrey to me. They're very different. They're like really different. They're very different. Oh no! Get out of the car, Sheba. That car about to blow up. Yup, it sure did. Sheba! Hi, Bushy Brows. There was an episode of As the World Turns where there was an alternate version of this girl. And the girl's alternate version. Huh? Kissed the husband and he was like, uh, you're not my wife. So I'm tripping. I didn't know that wasn't his Olivia. I mean, she but like almost died. They could like cut her ass some motherfucking slack. Walter was a mess on that show. Yes. And the actor playing Walter was so good. The two different versions of Walter, like our Walter, who was like a mess, but like a lovable mess. The other Walter that was like pure motherfucking evil. Joe had super rapey vibes. That's totally where it would have gone if they stayed together for a long time. Hi, sophisticated blurred. Mm. Seems they want her dad's company. I don't care if they look the same, not the same person. It's like the twin argument. Fringe is not paranormal. It's not, it's sci-fi more. It's not really paranormal. Ew, what is a puberty fairy? No, thank you. Pass already. French reminded me a lot of Seven Days. I guess that's why I loved it so much. No, I've never seen Big Mouth. It doesn't look interesting to me. It's an animated show that revolves around kids going through puberty. No, thank you. And I'm not saying that the fringe is the same as your idea either. I'm just saying you might like it. Um, wait, where am I? Where was I in the chat? Uh, 
Car's gonna blow up. <laughs> he was living his best life in that bed. Big Mouth is definitely one of those shows that has a specific audience. I think there are a lot of people who think it's creepy too much. Big Mouth is a lot to unpack. I'd rather not watch it. Uh, if you didn't, I know you know who did. Pam be threatening to whoop these niggas' asses, like, consistently. Asher was my fave, too. I remember being friends with her on Tumblr back in the day. I want more shows and films like Fringe and characters like her and Messy Walter. Mm. I'm at 21 minutes and... 28 seconds. She's manhandling this nigga in the white hat. I love Walter. Well, I love like our version of Walter. The alternate universe version of Walter. I should just be like, somebody please kill this old man. This old man got a motherfucking go. Oh my god, what did she put in his head in? <clears throat> Jim Carrey and Neil Patrick Harris, his performances were vastly different and were good for different reasons. Yeah, they were totally different. Like, the whole vibe of the movie is nothing like the vibe of the show. So, if you didn't like the movie... And so you're not watching the show because you didn't like the movie. You might really enjoy the show because it's still really nothing alike. Big Mouth gets very gross. You can pass. Not the puberty fairy, the hormone monster. It sounds like it's just getting worse and worse. Whenever someone goes, ah, you should watch Big Mouth. That's my favorite show I run. What do y'all like about it? Those of you that watch it, like, you think it's funny? What? I would hate Big Mouth. You would hate Big Mouth, hate it. Stay away. <laughs> she was lip glosses popping. I like her haircut, too. Is that a white LL Cool J hat? <laughs> it's a Kangol. This movie's from like the 70s. It's very funny that you just called it a LL Cool J hat. It's a bucket hat. Is that how the kids refer to it these days, Just Nickel? They argue in front of a waterfall. Bitch, you just have that nigga's head in a, some powder. You're obviously a street fighter, bitch. Wow. Big Mouth is one of those shows that thrives on shock value and pushing the envelope. Uh... Oh, it was asbestos? She was putting his face in asbestos? Pam stayed with the shits. I love the alternate Astra too. She was like a super computer brain. Yes, I love the alternate Astra too. She had like autism. She was like on the spectrum. And I thought her portrayal of that was really well done. Pam always beating these guys down. She dunking his head. She's a savage. Oh my gosh. Wow. Hormone monstrous. Big mouth. You like that? It's so raunchy. You see? I'll just take all of your words 
for it. I don't. No, thank you. Big Mouth is raunchy. I felt so uncomfortable watching it with my with my grandma. I hated on the concept of the show too at first, but I watched it. It ended up being funny. I like Big Mouth because it reminds me of going through puberty. It's super gross, but as a middle school kid, we were all super gross. I don't recall being that gross as a kid. Maybe I have blocked it from memory. I don't recall being that gross as a kid. I don't recall having like a super weird time with puberty. I just remember like being really tall, which never changed. I like Maya Rudolph who voices the hormone monstrous Connie. The series of unfortunate events series is far more faithful to the books and the movies. Yeah, I've never read the books, but I've heard that the vibe of the show, because the show is like extremely fucking surreal. Like, shit be happening on the show and you just be like, what? And I've heard that the vibe of the show is like, and the show is quite dark. I've heard that the vibe of that is like much closer to the books. Like kids getting killed and stuff. Like, you just be like, oh my goodness. <laughs> So Big Mouth is like legitimately offensive. Why would you watch that with your granny? <coughs> oh, I'm going to spit, guys. Sorry. I just coughed up some mucus. Sorry. It's offensive to everyone. It's offensive and crass and gross. Yeah, I'm eating the whipped cream. It gets even worse. One of the niggas on there is attracted to his male and female pillow and starts having threesomes with them. What? My Netflix guilty pleasure is the Dragon Prince. That took a lot to admit. I love the hormone monstrous, especially the songs people on SoundCloud make of the sample sound bites of her saying bubble bath. Big mouth is white humor, in my opinion. It's very white humor. Bob's Burgers is a pass for me, too. Oh, Ken said no, it's not white humor. I think my weirdness quota and shock value has been fulfilled by, fulfilled by Adult Swim. <laughs> Uh, it's like family on crack, but more sex obsessed and unsanitary as hell. What's black humor? I think white humor is generally, um, more disgusting, gross out humor. And I feel like black humor is more actually fucking funny. Like gross out humor just rests on the fact that it's gross. Like ha 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 farts. And nine times out of ten, when I watch, like, white comedians, it'd be, like, fart jokes, poop jokes. Just, oh, it's just funny just because it's disgusting. It's not an actual joke. I feel like black humor is more actual jokes. Like... Now I'm trying to think of a joke, but I'm also watching this, like, movie. <laughs> Ooh, they having a they be having shootouts. Like when Eddie Murphy like made that whole joke about like McDonald's, where he was like, "Your mom wouldn't take you to McDonald's. She said she could make McDonald's at home." And then your mom would try to like fuck with you and be like, "Yeah, we go have McDonald's." And you were like, "McDonald's, McDonald's." And then you like get home and your mom's version of McDonald's is like. A fucking thick ass dough, we like white bread, and she like put the ketchup all over it. And it turns into like pink dough, like paste with like a thick slab of meat, all these vegetables. And you're like, That's not McDonald's. And she's like, Yes, it is. Eat it. It was like a whole, like a fully crafted joke. It wasn't just like, Ha ha, farts. Ha ha. It's so funny. He farted. <laughs> That's like white people humor. Raunchy is the word. White humor is toilet humor. 
gross out humors, white humor. Like, I remember watching Bridesmaids and being like, this shit is not fucking funny. It's just disgusting. What is funny about the fact that they have diarrhea in the bridal shop and they're shitting everywhere? That's not funny. It's just gross. But like, white people think that type of shit is funny. That shit's not automatically fucking funny. I bet you if you saw somebody have fucking diarrhea in real life in the middle of the street, it wouldn't be funny. Oh, Brick. Big Mouth falls more in line with Deadpool humor. Oh, and I hated Deadpool. I thought it was really disgusting and not funny at all. I was just like, what the fuck is this? Like, gross out frat boy, like, humor. I, I don't think that's funny. I was like, oh, haha. His skin is burnt up and it's disgusting. How many jokes are we gonna have about it? The whole movie? The entire movie of Deadpool? How many jokes are we gonna have about like poop and fart and pegging? The whole movie? Two whole hours? These are not jokes. I don't think it's funny. Um... What? Oh, this nigga's tripping, tripping. Only a tornado could stop them from giving us their money. It's like some serious, like, expectations of getting some money. My guilty pleasure on Netflix is Vampire Diaries. Only because Cat Graham was in it throughout, the writing was horrible. Um, my nose is running. I watch a lot of comedy. Don't agree that gross out humor is white. No, that is white humor, that awkward gross out humor. I didn't have a problem with puberty other than boners in class and mild acne. Yeah, the series of unfortunate events I had to take a break from. Those poor children never get a break. The reason why I didn't like the movie is because they downplayed the darkness. The books are very dark. So you will probably actually really like the Netflix show, Tim. Pam has to be number one in breast exposure on film. I mean, her boobs are nice. A series of unfortunate events is truly a series of unfortunate events. <laughs> so what is blackout, black humor, cookout jokes, and physical comedy? Kim, that was racist. <laughs> Nobody said that. The children is what ruined Big Mouth for me. Like, why not put 17-year-olds just to be on the safe side? Pam all up in those streets with old dude. She almost died and is trying to live life to the fullest. Oh, yeah. Sorry, queen. I'm glad I gave you the heads up. <laughs> a series of unfortunate events depressed me when I was a kid. I think that black humor is more well-crafted jokes. Personally, I don't particularly find white humor to be actual well-crafted jokes. I think it just be like shit resting on grossness nine times out of ten. It's not a well-crafted joke. Jay and his, I can never pronounce this, anthropomorphized pillow girlfriend. And Big Mouth, they're like 12 years old. I wasn't having threesomes with my pillows at that age. White humor is disgusting stuff and frat boy humor. It's over-exaggerated. Cat Williams, Polo, Tink Tink. Yeah, that's like a joke. White people love their humor revolving around bodily fluids. White humor, gross out humor, farts, masturbation, sex, vomiting. Bridesmaids and Pitch Perfect did that a lot. Someone said we were all gross during puberty. Nah, I'm 19. I don't think so. White humor is a lack of imagination. Black humor is jokes about survival. <laughs> Sorry, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. White humor is Lena Dunham humor. And I don't think Lena Dunham is funny at all either. 
maybe why kids are gross like that. <laughs> why humor is Amy Schumer type of humor. I just think a lot of it's like gross. Like white heads popping and like exploding and throwing, yeah, like throwing up in people's faces and type of shit's not funny to me. Like, and white people love that shit. They think that type of shit is hilarious. Like throwing up, people throwing up on each other and throwing up in each other's mouths and stuff like that. White people think that shit is mad funny. I don't find that shit to be fucking funny, like, at all. I don't think it's funny. I've seen, the, like, or, like, American Pie is not funny at all. It's just, like, dick jokes, horrible dick, gross-out dick jokes, putting your dick in things. Or, like, white people think that jokes about, like, having sex with animals is funny. Like, oh, put peanut butter on your dick and have the dog lick it off. That's not funny. That's disgusting. It's bestiality, you fucking weirdos. Like, having sex with farm animals and shit. That's just not funny. It's disgusting. Why people think that type of shit is hilarious? Like, what was that fucking movie that had Kevin Hart in it where he was the only black person and he was like a higher out friend and there was a scene where he like the guy hired him to be the fucking friend and he like threw the um the fucking thing the bachelor thing and like they played a joke on the dude where they put the fucking peanut butter on the dude's dick and then the dog got like locked jaw and like his mouth like locked up on the dude's dick and then they're trying to like get into the hospital i was like this is fucking disgusting like this is not funny and you know how many, like, bachelor party, wedding, black comedy movies exist? None of them have jokes about having sex with animals. I'm sorry. I don't think black people think that's funny. I was, that was when I was like, okay, Kevin Hart is, like, cooning for coins right now. Like, black people don't find this type of shit funny. I think the type of comedy depends on the comedian specifically. Maybe you just like white comedy, Ken. That's, like, totally fine. If, like, maybe you just like white humor. That's fine. It's cool. I'm laughing. They be like, ha, 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 he farted. <laughs> white humor is like, let's see how urine tastes. Just barbaric stuff. Big Mouth does wait. Wait. Hold on. <laughs> Black humor's jokes about survival was really funny. <laughs> that really was funny. Big Mouth does often touch on important issues about sex and maturing from a child to an adult, but it's wrapped in tons of crass raunchiness. I thought bridesmaids was dry. Uh, frat boy humor. They lick toilet seats and stuff. More Friday humor to me. I guess that could be grouped under white humor. Ooh, piss asses. That's a good word. Um, white comedy has no imagination. Uh, Shock Jock, Gross Out, South Park. Uh, Tom Green, the epitome of early 2000s white humor. White folks always trying too hard to find their inner spirit, only to discover their souls are disgusting. There was a bit about this teenage girl. Are oh, you talking about on Big Mouth? There was a bit about a teenage girl as the Bachelorette with all these different forms of contraception as the Bachelor's. She ended up choosing the pull-out method personified as her boyfriend. I also kind of feel like white people are just, like, really... This, this is me personally. Like, I also think that white people are, like, really weird about sex at, like, a much younger age. Like, I would not be able to... Personally, like, I would not be able to relate to a show about, like, 14-year-olds and their sexual urges. I wasn't having sex at like 14. 
But like I said, white people will make a show about fucking 13-year-olds in Iowa, like, having sex with, like, farm animals and, like, sheep. And, like, all the jokes would be, like, everybody has fucking sex with, like, sheep and everybody. Somebody brought up Lena Dunham. That whole, like, chapter that Lena Dunham had wrote in her book about how she was, like, sexually experimenting with her sister. I remember people were like, this is, like, weird. This is, like, molestation. You're talking about, like, shoving pebbles up your little sister's, like, vagina when you were 12 and your sister was, like, 8 years old. This is disgusting. And she had wrote it jokingly, like, as if it was a joke. And then it became this like big point of conversation and contention because it was like all these other white people that was like, everybody's experimented around with their fucking cousins when, and their siblings when they were like 12 or 13. That's like normal sexual experimentation. It's funny. No, it's not. Courage the Cowardly Dog. I think that had a good balance of humor. You did. You got the zoom in, kid. South Park and Family Guy are examples of overkill cartoons with overkill humor where they think being offensive is just funny when it's not. Like, I thought that American Dad was funny. And I thought that American Dad was much funnier than... I never thought South Park was funny, ever. I used to like Family Guy, but then I started watching American Dad and I actually thought American Dad was way funny. And American Dad actually had like m much more interesting jokes about American white people and like society. Real jokes that somebody wrote, not just like, bleh, 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 bleh. Did you guys ever see that episode of Family Guy where they like take the Epic Hack and they're throwing up for like five minutes straight? Bleh, bleh. I was like, this is not funny. This is not, what is the joke? The joke is literally, they're throwing up. That's the whole fucking joke. That's the beginning, middle, and end of the joke is vomit. Right, Gary. That's why I stopped watching Family Guy. The jokes were just getting too absurd. And it felt like they were being overly crude just for the hell of it. A show with great humor is Crayon Shin Chan. It's dark as hell. And subtle but wild. Crayon Shin Chan. Never heard of that. I'll write it down though. Look at this man's coat and his hat. Talk about some Pam. What you need I got. I think comedy is overrated currently. I don't remember a funny recently released comedy special. I agree with that. Yeah. Pitch Perfect was atrocious. Courage the Cowardly Dog was my fave. The concept was amazing. The show was through the perspective of courage. I'm sure the world is terrifying the dogs. I don't want any of that junk. Two girls, one cup is their type of humor. Yes! And think it's hilarious. American Pie is gross. White people humor is barbaric. It's straight from caveman days. I hate that movie and everyone swears something's wrong with me. My cousin who's 20 likes Big Mouth, so I was stuck, stuck watching an episode. I felt like I was in a pedophile's dream. Damn. <laughs> Dude, where's my car? White humor. I liked it, though. I mean, only a white person could come up with two girls, one cup. But even, like, Dude, where's my car? There was a joke, like, um, fucking the hangover. Like, in Dude, Where's My Car? They don't know where the car is. They're trying to find the car. And, like, hijinks ensue. In the hangover, they, like, can't find the, their friend. And they're, like, trying to find their friend. And they're trying to, like, figure out what they did the night before. There was a lot of disgusting, gross-out humor. And, like, all the stuff with, like, the tie, like, the ladyboy stuff was, like, a lot it was a lot but there was also like a lot of like actually funny fucking jokes like all the shit with the baby was like really funny American Pie sort of sounds like the big mouth shit of just like sex it's funny because it's a penis a penis and it's a penis joke so it's automatically funny and this other time at band camp <laughs> 
The Wedding Ringer, that was a movie. That was a movie, The Wedding Ringer. Proof that white people are savages is their idea of humor. Oh, damn, I keep... Bye, Ken. Bye. Have fun at work. Or don't. <laughs> I do know your sense of humor, Ken. You like that gross out nasty shit. See, you like it's always sunny. That's why I said, I was like, you just like that gross out shit. And some people like the gross out shit. Like, if you like the gross out shit and you think it's funny, you like the gross out shit and you think it's funny. But I do think the gross out shit is like white people humor. <laughs> and I also think that, like I said, they don't even be really jokes. The whole joke be like, penis. That's the whole joke. Ah, penis. You know, I don't really find penises that to be that funny. <laughs> like, you know, I mean, I guess some penises are funny, but <laughs> they're not automatically funny just because they're dicks. Just because you put your dick in a fucking pie, it's not automatically funny. I mean, I'm laughing because it's just like people really think that like, it's like, it's like, maybe, I mean, but maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's like little kid humor because like little kids think penises are funny. It's like, ha 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 penis, right? Like it's funny just because it's a penis. It's just like, it's not that funny. Oh my gosh. She's like fucking this man up in the fucking car wash. That would be so terrifying because you really can't get out of the car in the car wash. She messed up his perm. That's why his feelings are really hurt. She messed up his perm. White comedy has no imagination. She put a one of them to my head. After I, um, where are we? I think their humor is a smokescreen for their fetishes. Let's use com comedy to play into our bestiality. Uh, the pissing in girls trip was not funny. I definitely liked toilet humor as a teen. Now I'm like, this shit is not funny. It's actually fucking gross. White people are obsessed with bestiality. And they're obsessed with bodily fluids. I remember watching that fucking part with the dog and the peanut butter. I was like, this is horrifying. If I saw something like this in real life, I would actually be like terrified. Haven't really seen any comedy movies in a while that made me genuinely laugh. Maybe if you're in the theater and everyone around you was laughing, so you laugh. Um, I personally think white people get exposed to sex too early in life. It's a different culture. Their humor isn't ours. Lena Dunham is a crazy person. I don't know why she's relevant. Lena should have been shut down. It was a lot. It was like, it was like so much. I was like, just like, and then there were so many people, white people that were like, yeah, everybody fucking shoves rocks in their fingers up their eight year old sister's vagina. No, they don't. No, they don't. Lena is a disgrace. Every white woman was out here defending her. They make sexual situations seem so gross. Lena was disgusting for that. And then she had the nerve to be a self-proclaimed champion for me too. But then when her male friend was accused, she called the woman a liar. And it was a black woman that accused her friend. American Dad is the better of the two shows. American Dad is hilarious. Lena Dunham totally got a pass from white media when she said that it, it's incestuous. It was all very much phrased as like, you know, a joke, a jokey joke, joke, sex, gross out humor, joke.
American Dad is way better. Never gave American Dad a chance. I might have to check it out. It's like funny because the premise of American Dad is like that the dad is like a FBI gung ho like go America type of dude and but they have like a literal illegal alien an actual fucking alien Roger like living in their house and Roger is just like so fucking extra all the time and he'd be dressing up in these fucking costumes <laughs> Roger's so extra Roger's just so extra and they're like constantly making fun of white people like constantly like constantly 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 American Dad was hilarious. That damn alien used to crack me up. American Dad is far superior to Family Guy. White humor has no punchlines, basically. I'm a fan of smart humor. I don't really like gross out frat boy physical slapstick, which is why I hate Kevin Hart in movies. Half the comedy is physical. Like, I like physical humor. I just really don't like gross out humor. I don't think that just because something is really disgusting, it's automatically funny. And I feel like the reason why I feel like that's like more in line with like white people humor is because like most white people do. They think that just because something is gross is funny. I'd be like, ew, no, it's just gross. I swear I thought I was the only one who thought American Dad was funnier than Family Guy. I also thought Futurama was very funny as well and very imaginative. Futurama always reminded me of fucking that show Cleopatra 2525 with Gina Torres, which used to be my show. I used to watch that shit so much, like, religiously when I was a little kid. I was, like, very, like, lesbian. Cleopatra 2525, Xena. I was, like, watching all the shows with, like, the powerful-ass bitches. Futurama has like the same plot as Cleopatra 2525. It is funnier. It's like funnier though. It's decently funny. <laughs> he looking like Jerome. I said Jerome in the house. I said Jerome in the house. <coughs> <clears throat> the first hangover was hilarious. I like Dude Where's My Car. I like Kevin Smith in general. He slept on. Like, I feel like, for example, like, Kevin Smith and, like, that's Kevin Smith, right? And Will Smith in, like, Hitch was really funny. And a lot of, like, their, that situational humor and a lot of, like, that stuff was, like, really funny. There was no scenes that involved dogs and peanut butter and penises. And it was, like, still funny. And there was even, like, some very physical humor, like, when he had the allergic reaction and when they were riding the jet skis and he, like, kicked that bitch in the face, like, stuff like that was, like, also funny, but, like, it wasn't super gross. I laughed so hard at Hangover 1 when they opened the bathroom door and there was a tiger. And, like, yeah, like, random things were happening in Hangover. And you were just like, what? Like... A tiger? Whose baby is that? Like, and you just trying to figure out what the fuck happens. And like, Dude Where's My Car had a lot of that same type. That's like more situational comedy. And like, what happened to this dude's fucking tooth? Where is his tooth? And even like, when they find the guy and he's like on the roof and then they like, the guy says later on, he's like, oh, it's just like when we, like, played that joke on you in college where we, like, put you on the roof, only this was way less funny because we, like, forgot where we put you, you know? Like, it that was funny to me. And then, and then, and then, and then, Panda. The best part about Hangover was when they found the guy in the trunk. It was, it was just like every five seconds more and more random, something else random happened. 
I think humor has soul, like music, and it's in the delivery. I don't remember the boondocks being gross. Oh, hi, Courtney Love. I'm late, but I'm watching Sheba Baby. And for anyone that needs to time check, I'm at 55 minutes and 40 seconds. As far as post-2000 white comedies, I like some of Judd Apatow's early stuff. And Wedding Crashers. That's where it stops for real. I really enjoyed Knocked Up. Knocked Up was really funny. What else? I mean, The Hangover is like early 2000s. Uh, nothing's coming to mind. Name some stuff, you guys. I like the gross out stuff in small doses. You liar! Pam Greer is whooping all these niggas' asses. She did mess up his perm. She put his head out the car wash. I remember those days getting my relaxed hair wet was never funny. Uh, Crayon Shen Chan is on Hulu. Beware, the art style is raggedy intentionally. Um... Yeah, the Boondocks had an issue with black women, and I've heard that the dude Aaron Magruder like really has a problem with black women in real life, which is interesting though because Regina Hall is like the voice of, or Regina King, I always do that, is like the voice of Huey and Riley. I enjoyed the boondo Boondocks because of the microaggressions of white people, the way Huey never excused it. Roger from American Dad is hilarious. Lena is entitled, nasty, and barbaric. I was on to her years ago when people were trying to hype girls. Jezebel called her out on that weird shit she did to her sister. I never got into girls either. That shit was mad overhyped. Roger is low-key the best character. I stand Roger. He is so extra the extraness. I love Roger and his costumes. I'm obsessed with aliens. If you don't believe aliens exist, you're not on my level. Yeah, Boondocks really lacked in female representation. I like Roger's gender fluidity and extraness. I like Futurama. Futurama. Leela from Futurama was my hero. I love kick-ass women. Makes me think of my mom. Yes, Xena. Cleopatra 2525. Holy shit, I remember that show. This be my show. In the year 25, 25, three women must fight to survive. This be my show. Futurama will always be the best adult targeted ta cartoon. My grandmother loves Xena. Yeah, Cleopatra 25, 25 got canceled after like two or three seasons. Something like that. Um... Raven Simone was very good with physical comedy and facial acting. It's a shame the path she went down. I was disappointed. <laughs> they probably did, Queen. That was probably a real fair. And they was just like, well, we better just shoot Pam Greer in this film for a while. Raven really disappointed me. I was a fan. Homegirl was talented. I love Dude, Where's My Car? Uh-oh. For some reason, the chat on the computer, I guess when I get too far behind, it just, like, keeps, like, jumping. It keeps, like, jumping down, and I have to keep, like, scrolling back up. Um... I love Roger... Uh, Raven was straight up be telling Chelsea she's nasty. Pam be fucking shit up. I like the, did like the hangover too. The hangover was like, you were just like watching this shit like, what? I remember watching that shit in a the theater like, what the fuck is going on? Which is the whole point of the movie that like they cannot remember shit. They did a lot of really, I feel like they did a lot of really good like world building. Oh, this is the movie where Pam is going to be.
beat up the white chick and like be smacking her around and like ashing on her. I have never seen this movie, but I have seen that part. She got a wig on. Pam got a wig on. Is Scott Pilgrim a comedy though? I mean, I love Scott Pilgrim, but will we call Scott Pilgrim a comedy? I don't, it's a comedy. <laughs> Damn, this interrogation is wild. Bye, Ori, even though I probably miss you. Uh, Pam Greer is making me feel things. Uh, here it I think this is, I think it's coming up. Yep, it is. There she goes. She just ashed on this white chick. She just like ashed on this white chick. And now they fighting. Pam Grier about to start smacking this hoe around. Death by Snoo Snoo is definitely iconic. Oh, did she sing the theme song? Death by Snoo Snoo. Everybody's like, yeah, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> that is a nice dress that Pam has on. Bam, bam, smacking her around. Autocorrect is indeed a joke. Uh, now that I think about it, I don't have a problem with physical comedy as long as it's supplementary and not your only trick. Uh, uh, I may or may not have named my one cat Xena with the intentions of naming her future companion Gabrielle. Just saying. She was going to tear this yacht party up. She sure did. And then she jumped overboard. Pam in the dress is gorgeous. Oh, you think that was a press out? I don't see Scott Pilgrim as a con comedy. It had some funny moments, but I wouldn't call it a comedy. But them titties though. Pam got the best titties in the game. Like, that's just no debate. Pam Greer got the best titties in the game, period. Period. And her dress held on for dear life, too. Mama Pam is slaying the house. She pimps laughter. Why are they just watching, not trying to stop it? Homicide that hoe. She hit her with the Thanos combo. She whipped her ass. He said, get this trash off my boat. Uh, bye, Chris. Pam has very sharp facial features. She's gorgeous. Uh, whoop on Becky. <laughs> the music in these movies is very good, isn't it? It's like always good. I don't really, I see this talk about Kiki Palmer. I don't really follow her career. I feel like she's like a try hard. I feel like Kiki Palmer cannot decide like who she wants to be or what she wants her career to be or so she just be like trying mad shit, throwing shit at the wall, like waiting to see what's going to stick. And I don't think none of it is sticking. And I kind of feel like she should just like take some time. But I do feel like Kiki Palmer can be funny. I do think she can be funny. But like most of the time, I find her funny is when she's like not trying. 
when she's just being herself. Like, a lot of her little, like, behind the scenes, just, like, joking around, like, Instagram stories and stuff, be funny. But, like, when she's, like, on, whatever her, like, on persona is, is whack. And, like, I don't know who you're trying, who are you trying to be? Just be yourself. That's just me, though. Ooh, there go Pam climbing on the boat. She's like an assassin. Um, <laughs> oh, there just jumped around again. In the 70s, you could just jump overboard at a cocktail party. I can't. I mean, you probably could jump overboard if you want a boat party now. No way Pam's hair is looking that nice after being in a fight and jumping in the water. I think she had a wig on. I think that was a wig. I used to follow Kiki on Instagram. I had to stop. Don't ask me for specifics because I can't remember, but it was too much. She be doing a lot. Like, she be doing a lot to be noticed. Like, You've been famous for like how long now? Like we know who you are. We know who you are. She overacts. Kiki rubs me the wrong way. Kiki's my Chicago adjacent queen. I think she's just a product of that child actor curse. I get the same vibe about her. I want to really like her, but I'm like, who are you? I think Kiki went through the child actor process but survived it and is now trying to find her lane as an adult. I do think she's trying to find her lane as an adult. Like, I do. I I agree. Kiki's just trying to find her spot. Personally, I think Kiki is just trying because being a black girl is her trying to work three times as hard. I like Kiki and I also think she's just trying to find her spot. We basically just said the same thing in unison. <laughs> her role in Star was underwhelming. Kiki Palmer is trying to find herself. And I know she was on Scream Queens, which I watched like only the first episode of and was decent. And she, I mean, she was decent on it. Kiki's had a steady career for, like, 10 years. She had her own show on Nickelodeon. Yeah, that's what I mean when I say, like, she's fame. Like, you've been famous a long time. I'm sure, like, her money's decent. Like, that's what I'm saying. I wish she would be herself instead of, like, whatever this persona she puts on trying to, like, get us to notice her. But I do agree that she's trying to, like, find her herself, her spot, her lane, whatever. I want better for Kiki. She's young, trying to find out who she is. Sometimes she makes my coon senses start tingling. Uh, Kiki isn't Raven Simone, but they've both done amazing things in the industry. Raven was a young executive producer of multiple shows. Kiki is also a great singer and dancer. Um, now what's that done to your masculinity? I'm just waiting for her to get a lead role as a hero in a sci-fi film or something, or maybe drop an album. That would be awesome. She kicked the shit out of that dude. I wouldn't call Kiki Palmer a young Tiffany Haddish either. I think that's a little... That's a little... That's a little bit... I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I mean, I really think... I agree with, like... Uh, I agree with you that said that, like... She's trying to find herself. Like... I agree with you. 
that she's just trying to find herself. I think Kiki Palmer is like trying to like figure out how old is she? Is she even twenty five? She she can't be right. I agree with you that she's just trying to like figure some stuff out. Because like I said, there's like I like there's a lot of times when. Like I said, I'm watching, like, Kiki Palmer doing something, like, behind the scenes. Or, again, like, I'm watching her, like, be on Instagram Live or, like, doing something, like, unscripted shit. And it's, like, very, like, cute and funny and genuine. I, like I said, I don't like when she puts on whatever that persona, like, and she puts on the persona before she does, like, her official, like, singing and acting and shit. And that should be too much. She does a lot of, like, too muchness. I just think she needs direction and focus. Kiki is not that far gone. Um, I don't think that Kiki is cooning. She's 25. Kiki Palmer is 25. There are things I like about Kiki, but that All Lives Matter thing messed me up. Her persona, oh, yeah, I see some of you guys saying she's trying to, like, put on a Jennifer Lewis persona. Is it me or does it feel like Tiffany Haddish is slowly being phased out? I feel like once she bombed at that fucking comedy show and showed people that she wasn't actually that fucking funny as they tried to, like, hype her up to be, I think a lot of people, like, abandoned her. And she tweeted something recently that, that was about, um, it was something about, Oh, you're watch out for fake friends. Watch out for people that they just want to be around you when you up, but once you down, da 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 da. This that and a third, and it's just like, well, like number one, bitch, that's the industry. Like, how old are you? And like, how long have you been in the industry? That like you don't know this. Number two, just like you're not that funny. Like you're not that funny. You let people hype you up and gas you up into thinking you were funnier than you really were. Now you have to actually come back and prove yourself and apparently you can't do it. You had a lot of yes people and fair weather friends and shit like that that were around you and now you have to deal. Like, deal. You a grown adult. Deal. I don't blame Kiki. It'd be like that when you turn 25. I do agree that it's hard to pin down who she is exactly. Uh, we've lost Tiffany. She's up there with Kevin Hart. Oh, Coon and Hart. Sorry, I take that back. Kiki Palmer needs development because she, but but because she's black, the industry doesn't value any of her talent. Tiffany is a comedic actress. She isn't funny. Funny. Tiffany is untalented. She's a caricature. Also, after she said that PETA joke, people were coming after her. Tiffany needs major coaching. I know I see y'all having a little, who's gonna block? Who's gonna block? <laughs> right, so many folks are getting blocked, comments deleted, and timed out. Right. There's a difference between being a comedic actress and an actual comedian. Uh, Kiki. Nah. PETA could kick raw. I mean, fuck, yeah, I don't fuck with PETA. Fuck PETA. I see you guys are talking about Ryan Murphy. Was Kiki Palmer on a Ryan? I don't... I don't know. Was Kiki Palmer on a Ryan Murphy show? Was her show done by Ryan Murphy? That's the dude that did Glee, right? Kill this coon and get it over with. Oh, Scream Queens was Ryan Murphy. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. 
I didn't know that. I only I told you guys I literally only watched one episode, the first episode, and I don't even really I didn't re realize. Mm. Out of the younger black actresses, Kiki is one of the better ones. Um, I like Kiki Lane more than Kiki Palmer, personally. I really like Kiki Lane a lot. I think she's an excellent actress, and she has really good stage presence. I also love Nefessa Williams very much as you guys know but I don't know if Nefessa Williams is trying to like transition into movies or like what she's doing I love Kiki Lane though and I'm gonna also I'm really excited to see her in Native Son I'm gonna watch everything she's in she's like my new little fave I like her a lot Mm. Tiffany Haddish and Kevin Hart have the same comedy routine. Kiki Palmer. Yeah, it's funny that they're both named Kiki. Kiki Lane's real name is Keandra. Kiki Palmer is just one that I'm going to have to sit on and wait and get back to her when she figures out what she's trying to do and who she's trying to be. I've never seen American Horror Story or Pose. I do like Kiki Lane. Kiki Lane, yeah, she's bomb. Kiki is the girl right now and I'm here for it. I would love Kiki Lane and Storm. As soon as I heard it, I was ready. Philly, stand up. You guys should watch The Passage. There's this young actress named Sanaya Sydney, and I'm rooting for her. She's 12 and reminds me of Dakota Fanning, except she's so good. <laughs> What's it about, The Passage? Kiki Lane and Nefessa Williams is also bae, too. Um... The Passage. Uh, I agree. I continue to be confused by Kiki Palmer, too. Nefessa is so beautiful. Hmm. I'm cool with either. I think Kiki Lane could be great as Storm. But I really like, like the serious dramatic roles that she's taking. because Just because she's so young. She's like only 19. And a lot of young girls don't do a lot of serious stuff. So I like the fact that she's doing like really meaty, serious, dramatic roles at such a young age. I think that's really cool to witness also. Mm-mm-mm. mm China Ann is doing her thing too. That girl plays like, get out of here. Six instruments and can sing and act. Yeah, Kiki Lane is only like 19. She's really young. She's only like 19. Kiki Lane, not Kiki Palmer. Kiki Lane. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. I've never heard of China Ann. I've never seen American Horror Story or Pose, yeah. That must be new because that's incorrect. Because it was a big thing that Kiki Lane was just like the same age as Tish and Beale Street could talk. So somebody, and Kiki Lane just got a Wikipedia page like last week. So 
That's incorrect. Kiki Lane is not in her late 20s. No, she's not. <laughs> this was just made... I just looked it up myself, the Wikipedia. This was just made two days ago. That's not right. That's not correct. So if you guys want to like go by what Wikipedia says, that's fine. I can't stop you, but sh that's incorrect. <laughs> Cause it was like a big deal that she was like a 19 year old newcomer because she's the same she's the same age as tish in beale street who was like 19 or 20 i think she's like 20 years old max and like i said she definitely didn't use to have a wikipedia page she just got that they probably have her confused with kiki palmer who's mid-20s because they're both named kiki Beale Street was amazing. Beale Street was amazing. Are you talking about Nefesta Williams? Oh, Chi China. Okay, she's on Black Lightning. Okay. I was like, wait, like, who are we talking about? I see, like, Kiki Palmer, Kiki Lane, Nefesta Williams, and China Ann, like, all being thrown around. And is now on Black Panther. Got it. Beale Street is really good. Beale Street was like really, really good. Uh, all Kikis don't look alike. <laughs> I saw a lot of people getting them confused online. Like, I saw a lot of people getting them confused online. A lot. I was like, that is not K Kiki Lane. <laughs> You guys are talking about Kiki Palmer. <laughs> I was like reading some of the reviews of If Beale Street Could Talk, which I don't even think that a lot of the reviews were all bad. I think a lot of people missed the whole point of the movie, but that's like neither here nor there. But I was reading a lot of reviews and people were like, Kiki Lane, the, who was on Scream Queens, shit like that. And I was like, no, New York Times, you're thinking of Kiki Palmer. Like, where is your fucking fact checker? I'll I'll look up the passage. Bye, Monica. Yes, Pam Creer is like getting on the ass. Barry Jenkins is my guy. Of course, I have to watch. And it feels Street could talk got like so incredibly snubbed that it is hilarious. And I just be like, you see, like these award shows are a joke. Like, it's funny at this point. Like. Super, if Beale Street Could Talk got super snubbed. I was like, the fact that Black Klansman, Green Book, and Black Panther all got nominated for Best Picture of the Year, but not if Beale Street Could Talk, despite the fact that if Beale Street Could Talk was directed by a previous Best Picture winner, it's just like, this is like a hardcore snub. Like, they don't really respect the work at all. Beale Street was shot beautifully. They don't even care to do research. It's all facts. If you type in Kiki Lane, one of Kiki Palmer's characters will pop up. You also have to make sure you type you spell her name correctly. Kiki Lane is a newbie and Kiki Palmer has been out. 
The movie was beautifully shot, and the ending of Beale Street Could Talk was my favorite. Pam's skin is so beautiful. It was realistic. They have, like, voiceovers and, like, pictures of actual black Americans that have been, like, wrongfully imprisoned and stuff. And I was like, people aren't going to like this movie. I was like, people aren't going to like this movie. It's, shit is a little too real. It's, like, a little too real. This is not a movie that, like, white people can walk out of feeling good about themselves. This movie's not getting nominated for shit. <laughs> Beale didn't win anything. Kiki isn't nominated for anything. Trash. I think the only nomination it got was Regina King got nominated for Best Supporting Actress. And she was amazing. But Kiki deserved. Brian Tyree Henry deserved a Best Supporting Actor. Stephen James deserved. It deserved a Best Picture nomination. Like if we're being serious, which these award shows are not serious. They're fucking jokes. What, it deserved to be nominated way more than Black Panther, Black Klansman, or Green Book. Way more. It was a better. It was a better movie. It was just a better movie. Like it was a better movie. It was a better movie. It was a love story, and the most important love in the film was what was shared between the family. It was so important to me that I started using them as a reference and therapy. Yes, like, it was a movie about, like, love. But not even just, like, romantic love, but, like, family, friends, parents, and children. It was, like, very much about, like, love. But I think people thought it was going to be, like, some feel-good Christmas romance love that it was going to have a happy ending, and that's not what the shit was. They once got Azealia Banks and Kiki Palmer mixed up. I was like, how? They can't respect what they don't understand. Black Klansman was horrible. Who would have thought that Regina King would go from being Craig's sister on Friday to being a big header in the game? Yeah, no. I haven't seen if Bill Street could talk, but since it didn't get nominated, I guess it didn't have anything for white people to latch on to. It was too real. She did it. Hey, Bill Street was too real. White people walked out of Black Klansmen feeling great, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, and Green Book had, like, a white main character. Like... And Black Panther had a white savior CIA agent character. Like, I mean, I know it's, like, a Marvel, like... Bill Street could talk didn't even have no white people in it. <laughs> it didn't have no white savior characters, no white main characters. It was like 100% about like mass incarceration and like the racist judicial system and how it like rips apart black families and how black families like continue to like persevere and like love each other in spite of that. They ain't like that shit. <laughs> They didn't like that Bill Street is a predominantly black film with black American actors playing BA characters. Yeah, there was also that all the all the actors were DACS except for um Fonny, who's Canadian. There was no white savior. Who was in Green Book? Mahershala Ali and Viggo Mortensen. And Mahershala Ali actually ended up making a formal apology to like the family of the dude for the movie. Because people were like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> I was like, and they nominated this for some awards? These awards are a joke. <coughs> well, I didn't like Black Panther. As everybody knows. I didn't hate it. But I don't think Black Panther... As a movie... And you guys know I love movies. Like, I'm a movie person. I don't just watch movies just because like I love film I don't think Black Panther was a great film I'm not gonna say I thought it was a, a great film like just because fucking black people were in it I'm sorry I don't think that it was a great film I don't think that it was a great film it's definitely not best picture worthy no it's not I'm sorry to me it's like another case of like Cardi B winning like the best rap fucking Grammy which is just like they just trying to like get fucking faces 
faces of color and women of color and more women like people were like oh cardi got nominated this is like great because like we need to see more women being nominated for grammys now like, grammys are bullshit everybody knows how we feel that way but it's like if you're nominating women like just for the hell of it that's like defeating even defeating the purpose of like the work if you're gonna like nominate something, like nominate something that's like actually really good. Like there's plenty of work by women that's like actually great. There's plenty of movies with black people in them that's like that are like actually great fucking movies. Niggas just be like it's like pulling names out of a hat and they just be like, oh, there's some black people in this one, just like nominate this one. Like, Black Panther was not a great film. I mean, I did a review of it where I like broke down what I didn't like about it, like cinematically. It wasn't a great film and if we're talking about, and if we're talking about Best Picture, like, Shape of Water won Best Picture last year, and Shape of Water was, like, a beautiful movie. It was, like, really a great movie, period. It was great. It was great. It was a wonderful film. Like, Moonlight won the year before, and, like, Moonlight was, like, a truly wonderful film. Do we really think that, like, Black Panther is a great film up there with, like, moonlight or like the shape of water no i don't think so i think if bill street could talk was a great film for real i thought it was like out of like out of all the movies i saw this year and i've seen a lot of movies it was really my favorite it was a great film period the directing was great the cinematography was great the acting was wonderful like it was a wonderful movie it wasn't just a movie that made a lot of money because people are like oh my god like black panther like shattered the records it wasn't just a movie that made a lot of money. It wasn't just a movie that had a lot of black people. It wasn't just a Marvel movie, blah, blah, blah. It was like an actually great film. I thought The Dark Knight was like a genuinely wonderful film. It was a great film. And the whole reason why they even increased the best picture category from like five movies to like to eight or ten, whatever it is, is because Dark Knight didn't get nominated because there like wasn't enough slots. And they, like, discriminate against comic book movies and sci-fi movies and speculative fiction movies. They always discriminate against them. And people made a big fuss about it because they were like, The Dark Knight is a great fucking film. And so it's like now they, like, increased it. And so now a movie like Black Panther can get nominated, which is not as good of a film. But it can, like, benefit. I, I don't like that. I personally don't like that. Just That's just my personal taste. Like, I don't think that's fair. So now, like, subpar shit. So now, like... Like, when Wonder Woman got nominated last year, I was like, Wonder Woman was not a great movie. It just got nominated because it made a lot of money and, like, Patty Jenkins directed it and stuff like that. Like, it wasn't a great film. It's like, but now, since, like, The Dark Knight got snubbed, now we have subpar movies that can get nominated for Best Picture just because. I don't think that's... It's annoying to me. As somebody that loves film, I don't think that's fair. But Whatever. All these award shows are bullshit anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But, like, just to have the conversation, I don't think it's fair. Uh, where was I? Bill Street got the Eve's Bayou treatment. I heard that Green Book was some white savior shit, so it'll win something. Bill Street might have been the most important film I've ever seen. I didn't know how much I needed something like that until I got it. And I thought if Bill Street Could Talk was a better movie than Moonlight, which won Best Picture. And if Bill Street Could Talk is an improvement on Moonlight in Every Way by Barry Jenkins. So the fact that if the fact that Moonlight could get nominated and also win Best Picture, but not if Bill Street Could Talk, which is by the same director, which is shot in a similar way, and you could even say deals with like some of the similar themes, but like doesn't even get any type of nomination, that's like a clear snub. If a movie doesn't have a white savior, it's not getting nominated. Eve's Bayou was amazing. I still love Eve's Bayou. White people have to feel good for our art to be bad validated by these awards. White people were watching Bill Street like, where's Agent Ross? I'm so sick of the Oscars only celebrating movies with white saviors. Green Book was sh really shit from what I heard terribly. The family was pissed. It shouldn't have been on Maharshala Ali to apologize. They paid Eve's Bayou dust. We only get acknowledged when white people save us. Maharshala Ali is rumored to be the next Blade in the MCU. I don't care. <laughs> Uh, they really snubbed Eve's Bayou, which is a shame because Eve's Bayou was good. Black Panther's storyline was horrible. The action stuff, sure, but that's all. Um, I took a white boy to see Beale Street and he commented that it was so sad. 
Black Panther for Best Picture, no, for makeup and clothing. I could see that. It's overhyped because it's an MCU movie. White people love a white savior in a movie. Ease by you was my favorite movie as a kid. I watched Black Panther, it didn't look that interesting. And I like Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. A lot of people were saying they feel like Into the Spider-Verse was way better than Black Panther. And if a movie was going to be nominated, they felt like it should have been Into the Spider-Verse. Which, Into the Spider-Verse got nominated for like Best Animated animated picture or something like that oh you got your tacos we're just talking about um awards the bullshit ass awards and we started by talking about bill street if bill street could talk now we're just talking about bullshit <laughs> i stopped caring about the grammys after they snubbed beyonce's lemonade barty is the same as kim kardashian she keeps herself relevant with antics um the shape of water was a cinematic masterpiece it's been 10 years since i personally stopped watching all the word shows i think i when did i stop i think it's been like five years now four i think 2014 was the last year i did um awards so five years um i think costume makeup and hair black panther was definitely the fav wait was definitely the best when it was nominated for Best Picture, I was like, how? I never watched Black Panther. Black Panther was a representation film only. Uh, finally, we have one movie, but that's all. Let's be real. I think Black Panther is just getting nominated because of white guilt. It shouldn't win. At the end of the day, Black Panther was just another Marvel movie with the same exact art. There's nothing groundbreaking aside from the representation. Um... Dark Knight is in its own dimension. Um, wait. Where? Wait. Okay, Dark Knight is in its own dimension. Wonder Woman was not that great. I always lean towards sci-fi, which usually gets paid dust. Initially, I was hyped for Black Panther. I did enjoy it, but I felt the need to validate it over black superhero fil films like Blade, Spawn, and even Meteor Man was offensive. Yes, and you guys know that I found that to be very offensive, too. The amount of people that were saying that this was, like, the first black superhero movie, I was like, no, it's not. The amount of people that were never into fucking speculative fiction or sci-fi or comic book shit that, like, all of a sudden calling themselves experts, meanwhile, they've never seen Blade or they've never seen Spawn, or they've never seen Meteor Man, or they've never seen Blank Man, and now they're writing 3,000 word long form essays on how Black Panther was the first superhero movie, it was a lot for me. I was just like, you guys don't even know what you're talking about. As a comic book fan, as a speculative fiction film fan, as a sci-fi fan, as a film like person, I was just like, this is like wild offensive. This is like wildly offensive. <laughs> This is, like, wildly offensive. <laughs> These award shows don't deserve movies like Moonlight and Beale Street Atop. Oscars be pandering, pandering. I watch that scene where Moonlight won to snatch the shit from La La Land every year. It never gets old. Oh! And La La Land was, like, a crap movie that I don't even know why it won anything. That's going to be like, I feel like that's going to be like A Star is Born this year. I think A Star is Born is going to win a lot of awards. That Freddie Mercury movie is also going to win a lot of awards just because. Um, like, definitely. You're not wrong, the boy in blue. You're absolutely 100% correct. I hate to say this, but I think the gay storyline elevated Moonlight, even if Beale Street was better. Awards love queer elements, mental illness, white people, etc. I agree with you totally. I totally agree. Um, Into the Spider-Verse was really good. Spider-Verse was the better movie, to be honest. Award shows never seemed to interest me ever since I was a child. I'm the judge of my own best pictures and actors. Right. And you guys know that's how I feel about award shows too. Like you can't objectively tell me that this was the best just because like some random white people voted on it and said it was. No. And I also have an issue with like the concept of an award show because it's just like 
like if I make a movie and I, I like I make the movie, I make the movie and the movie comes out, right? And then the Oscars come out eight months later and the Oscars say this movie was really good. And so like now all of a sudden my movie is good. It's the exact same movie that I made a year ago. But like now all of a sudden it's good just because they said so. Like I don't like that. Like you can't tell me that. You cannot validate my art. Sorry. You cannot do it. You can't do it. I haven't watched an award show since I was in middle school. I'm 30 now. Um, I've been over the whole narrative of putting a black person and a racist together to cure racism. Um, where... Black Panther was the first mainstream movie with an all-black cast, but not the first period. Um, a Star is Born is exactly the same as La La Land. They get these repetitive films all the time. These are boring movies that nobody is ever going to watch ever again. Uh, Robert Townsend is a Hollywood legend that doesn't get his flowers enough. Right, I agree with that also, totally. It's like, you wouldn't even have a Black Panther without Meteor Man by Robert Townsend. How did I just read your 3,000 word long form, form essay on Black people in comments and, and comics and like not read a mention of Robert Townsend? Like, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Get out of my face. <coughs> uh... I only watched Black Panther once and that was on Netflix. I was so underwhelmed, but I didn't bash it because I didn't want to get dragged. Why do white movies about whites find a music get so much recognition? We created all these genres anyway. Um... Oh my God, I really wish this chat would stop jumping around, please. Stop. So I can scroll down to the end, please. A Star is Born looks so boring. I couldn't even get to the originals while I remake it. Uh, Robert Townsend is truly the goat. Uh, okay, I think I'm pretty much at the bottom. So, Next week, we're going to be watching Get Christy Love. I'm going to remember, Queen. Even though I think you might be gone. <laughs> but, oh no, you're still there. Oh, I, I didn't, I missed this. That's why I feel Beyonce is an actress. Is If Gaga is winning awards for doing what she does as her profession, why is Beyonce shunned that much? Gaga is doing what Beyonce tried to do. I think people feel like Lady Gaga is a better actress than Beyonce. I don't think I've ever actually seen Lady Gaga act in anything because I don't watch American Horror Story and I did not see A Star is Born. And I don't think she's been in anything else. But I do think for somebody that hasn't done very much acting, Lady Gaga gets a lot of preferential treatment for her acting. A lot. And I like, I love Lady Gaga's music. Well, like the old stuff, the fame and like the fame monster and stuff like that. But it was like, as soon as Lady Gaga decided to start acting, all of a sudden people were acting like she was just like the baddest bitch acting, which I do think was a little bit unfair. Definitely. And on that note, um, it's going to be Get Chrissy Love next week. Get Chrissy Love next week. Um, Meteor Man was the first superhero movie I saw as a kid. Even before Superman, my parents were about it. I saw the trailer for A Star is Born, but I was not interested. Yes, get Christy Love next week. Get Christy Love next week. Get Christy Love next week. I don't like Lady Gaga as an actress. I'm going to check. I don't know if I'm going to check out the passage between now and next week. I'm not promising that. But she browsed. I did say I would look it up, but I'm not giving you a timeline as to when.
When I stopped centering white people in the white gaze, these shows became comedic. Lady Gaga played herself on Horror Story. Gaga, a better actress than Beyonce, where... Um, the Countess was literally Gaga's persona. Beyonce is not a good actress. I love B, but Gaga is a better actress. Beyonce is not a good actress, but I thought she was decent in Dreamgirls. I love Beyonce, but Gaga is a better actress, but not by much. I, right, Mar. I haven't seen Gaga act yet, so the ruling is suspended. Beyonce's been in more than three movies. Beyonce was in Carmen, the hip-hopera. Beyonce was in that Obsessed movie with Ali Larder. She was in Cadillac Records. She was in Fighting Temptations. She was, she was in Dreamgirls. That's five movies I just named right there off the top of my head. She's definitely been in more than three movies. She was in Pink Panther 6. Yeah. Oh, she was in Goldmember. Yep. 7. That was Austin Powers. Yeah, she's definitely been in more than three movies. She's definitely been in more than three movies. Beyonce's been trying to act for a while. <laughs> I don't think Beyonce is a great actress. I don't think Beyonce is a great actress. She gets an A for effort, maybe, because she's been trying for a minute. I have not seen Gaga act, as Mar said, so the ruling is suspended. So, Lady Gaga, isn't this her first movie? Isn't A Star Is Born her first movie? And she was in American Horror Story? Has she been in anything else? When I like saw how well received she was, I was like, damn, she's being really well received for somebody that hasn't been like Lady Gaga hasn't done a ton of acting. Music videos don't count. <laughs> Beyonce is not a great actress, but to be fair, Beyonce started acting at a younger age. I don't think Beyonce can act. I'm not saying Gaga can act, but Beyonce sure can't. <laughs> um And I see a lot of you guys are saying that Lady Gaga was basically playing herself in American Horror Story, which I believe. I saw Gaga in American Horror Story, but that wasn't acting. Low-key, Beyonce stay in movies. I love my B, but she can't act. She was good in Cadillac Records. That's it. I watched Five Minutes of Obsessed when it came on BET, and I was like, oh, so this is what they mean when they say Beyonce can't act. You touched my son! It was, it was a lot. Like, Beyonce, like, it was a bit much. I really feel it's deeper on this whole Beyonce can't act thing. Beyonce just gets nervous. Uh, oh, look, Ebony put, you touched my son! Beyonce bad acting. Beyonce has become more artistic, though, so maybe another attempt would be different. Jennifer Hudson carried Beyonce and Dream Girls. They threw the Golden Globe at Gaga for American Horror Stories. B did good in Cadillac Records, Dream Girls, and Fighting Temptations. The rest of her films sucked to me. Yeah. Oh, Lady Gaga was in Sin City too. I didn't see that. I think Gaga went to a performing art school or something. Yeah, she did in New York. Beyonce should definitely attempt to act again with her new artistic direction. Gaga was herself in American Horror Story. She was her persona of Gaga. Gaga in American Horror Story was like Rihanna in Bates Motel. Beyonce in Obsessed was over the top. I like watching Obsessed just to watch her be beat up that white girl. Rihanna is a terrible actress. People like J-Lo are ones I prefer in movie roles. Uh, I want Beyonce to write her own films and bring back House of Darion. Okay, bye, folks. <laughs> bye, queen. Get Christy Love next week. Definitely, I'll remember. Obsess I just didn't remember because we skipped last week. Obsessed was the movie I was trying to think of. Rihanna is a trash actress. I don't know why Beyonce can never throw her voice. She keeps the same tone in all of her movies. I'm curious to see what she pulls off in Lion King. Not House of Darion. Mary J. Blige can act low-key. Like, all of the awards that they be trying to... All these acting awards that they be trying to throw at Lady Gaga. A lot of those awards 
could be going to Mary J. Blige if we're keeping it all the way 100. Because Mary J. Blige is a really good actress, in my opinion. Like, definitely. I don't know. We'll see. I see you guys talking about J-Lo. I feel like J-Lo is a good actress. I like J-Lo in Enough. J-Lo is better at acting than singing, but I don't like her, so it's whatever. She's racist. <laughs> Mary J. Blige can act for sure. She was great in Mud Mudbound. I I like Jennifer Lopez and her comedic and her like romantic comedies. Like Jennifer Lopez was good in The Wedding Planner. She was really cute in The Backup Plan. I liked her in Monster in Law. Like. Speaking of, like, comedy, like we were talking about earlier, J-Lo has, like, really good comedic timing, in my opinion. I feel like J-Lo has really good comedic timing. She's definitely a much, much 5,000 times better actress than singer. Definitely. Absolutely. 100%. Completely. Completely. J Lo is I liked enough too. I saw you guys brought up enough. I liked enough too. J Lo is definitely a better actress than she is a musician. Enough I liked her, especially that scene at the end, being her husband ass. Yeah. Beyonce was a lot better in Dream Girls and Fighting Temptations than anything else. I feel like Beyonce's acting is like extremely polarizing. Like some people loved Cadillac Records. Some people hated Cadillac Records. Like, there's no in-between with Beyonce's acting. Oh, yes, I used to love Money Train. That used to be my movie. And Jennifer Lopez was good in Money Train. That used to be my movie. Enough was pretty good. Um, Jayla was a good actress and a, hor a horrible singer. Yeah, she should have just, like, stuck to act. Dang. I feel like her comedic roles be funny. Like, her romantic comedies be funny. If you've never seen The Backup Plan with J-Lo, it's mad fucking funny, and I highly recommend it. That shit is hilarious. The train is coming. I mean, we've talked about Queen Latifah several times because we've watched, like, a million Queen Latifah movies for Beast Bake. <laughs> I love Cadillac Records, but not for Beyonce. And I don't think that Queen Latifah is underrated as an actress. She's been in like 5,000 movies. Beyonce needs to play someone very unlike herself, like a drug addict or a postal worker. A postal worker? <laughs> like a drug addict or a postal worker. <laughs> I think Beyonce's accent has a lot to do with it too. I get Foxy Cleopatra a lot in her roles. Now, Mariah Carey, I think, is somebody that could be brought up in this conversation more. Mariah Carey is not a terrible actress, like, at all. She's really not. Glitter was a bad movie, but Mariah Carey was not bad in the movie. J-Lo is a trash singer. Woody Harrelson and Wesley Snipes were the best duo in the 90s. Queen Latifah is excellent at everything she does. She's an excellent actress. Set it off. She, um, Dana is not underrated. Oh, you put out Queen Latifah's real name. Glitter was garbage. Glitter is my guilty prep pleasure for sure. I secretly want a Glitter remake. Mariah Carey was the social worker and precious. I thought she was pretty compelling. Cadillac Records was stale like a piece of old bread. Mariah and precious and upset. j Hug can act too. I mean, what is Queen Latifah doing right now? Mariah Carey can act. And not like in a shady way. Just like, what is she doing? Mariah Carey can act and I dare someone to try to tell me she can't. People love to hate her. Queen Latifah won an Oscar. Did she win? I know she got nominated for Chicago, I think. I don't know if she won. She's great. And I feel like people, like, love her. Like, everything Queen Latifah does is always so well-received. I love Mariah's speaking voice as well. 
Oh, your mom is having a party. I think my mom is having a party by herself. She's playing Luther Vandross. She just played before I let go. Who's on Star? Mariah or Queen Latifah? Yeah, I like glitter, but I haven't seen it since I was a kid. A drug addict role would be good for Beyonce. Mariah was also in a movie called Wise Girls. It was very good. Queen Latifah was nominated but didn't win, but who cares? She's a GOAT. She and her partner are getting ready to have a baby. Mm. Queen Latifah is on Star. Got it. Queen Latifah is about to be a mom. She's busy. Yeah. Like, you know who I think is not that great of an actress? Jessica Alba. I think we can all be in agreement that Jessica Alba is a terrible actress. Remember when we were watching Never Been Kissed and I was like, I'm pretty sure Jessica Alba is supposed to be the black friend. Because she had like an afro. I was like, Jessica Alba was like the go-to black friend for a while in all these white movies. And then she got her like DNA ancestry like tested on TV. And then it turned out that she was like not your black friend. <laughs> Jessica Alba was always basic to me. Jessica Alba's always been basic. I liked her in Dark Angel. That was the only thing she, good she was in. I used to love Dark Angel, where she was Max. That used to be my show. Jessica Alba is whack. Honey was only okay. She's been basic. Yeah. They used Jessica Alba and Honey, and I thought she was a Latina or something. She was a Latina and Honey, and Joy Bryant was like her black friend. Yes, Jessica Alba was the original racially ambiguous friend. Yes, she was. She was, and they used to put this fake afro on her. They would like crimp her hair. But like, she used to have like a pretend afro and I was like, I'm pretty sure they're trying to like stage her as like the black friend. <laughs> Dark Angel was really good. Yeah. Dark Angel was, but just the subject matter of Dark Angel was really good. And I'm pretty sure that like one of the dudes from Alias was on it. And this was like before Alias. That was another case of having like a really good supporting cast. So you just kind of like getting by. Like Jessica Alba. Um, <laughs> I'm screaming at these Jessica Alba comments, but they're true. And yeah, she's white. She took the fucking uh, DNA test and it came out that she was like 98% like European Spaniard. And she was like so shocked and shit. Like, bitch, you're white. <laughs> You're a spicy white hoe. Um, Jessica Alba is the ultimate spicy white. I just saw that comment, the boy in blue. Exactly. Yes, Jessica Alba was like fronting for a little while. She was like fronting. She was like fronting a little bit. Hardcore. Yeah, now she's a billionaire off that honest shit. Them honest products. She's the true dark white. <laughs> you guys fucking singing the music from You Got Served. I see I see these comments. <laughs> now drop, now drop, now drop, now drop. Breathe in, breathe out. <laughs> Jessica Alba is dusky. First time I saw Honey, yep, I thought she was black. And she like really like played that shit up a lot. Really, she is the original racially ambiguous friend. Because remember in, like, the 90s and 2000s, like, all those, like, movies had, like, at least one black friend. It was, like, Gabrielle Union for a while. Like, they all had one black friend. And there was, like, a couple of them, Never Been Kissed and Idle Hands, that had Jessica Alba. And I'm pretty sure Jessica Alba was supposed to be, like, the black friend. Because she had, like, a little bit of, like, a, a complexion to her. I really was fooled. I thought she was Afro-Latina. Yes, that was like what they were pushing until she got her DNA done. And it was like, uh, this is a white bitch. And then she kind of fell off after that. And then she started doing the honest shit, which made her a billionaire. So I guess it all worked out in the end, didn't it? 
Yeah, Idle Hands. Jessica Alba was in Idle Hands. It was fucking Devin Sawa, um, motherfucking Stan from the Stan video. And her. And he might have also been in the first Final Destination. I don't know. All those white boys look the same. For those who don't know, Spicy White is a white person who is ambiguous or ethnic seeming. Bye, Sponge Dami! <laughs> I'm gonna go to you in a minute. Much like Raphael on Jane the Virgin, who was supposed to be Latino at first. I'm not even gonna front. I thought Jessica Alba was black in my younger in my younger years. I was slightly fooled by Alba back in the day. <laughs> the cast and peeps scattered after that DNA test. You always gotta have the black friend to make it seem diverse. Spicy white with honey mustard on the side. <laughs> A lot of Italians are spicy white. It's very funny because in fucking, in The Wedding Planner, Jennifer Lopez is playing an Italian, Mary Fiore. I was like, and then Jiggly, Gigli, she's like also playing an Italian. Jessica, J Jennifer Lopez is another one that'd be like, the bitch be like, Latinx when she wanna be, she be Italian when she wanna be, she wanna throw the N word out there when she feels like it. Like, bitch, you are not from every fucking continent in the countries bitch like you have to pick something ho like it's too much it's too much and Jessica Alba is like another one like that like I'm just kind of whatever I need to be at the moment it's just because Jessica Alba is tan and has lips <laughs> um yeah, she was in the original Fantastic Four movies, too. <laughs> Y'all were tricked, hoodwinked, bamboozled, run amok, led astray. <laughs> I would never believe Jayla was Italian. She plays an Italian in The Wedding Planner. Her name is Mary Fiore. There's a whole plot line about how her father, who's obviously a white man in the movie, came over from Italy and was, like, in an arranged marriage with her mom. And she ends up... She's in this arranged marriage with this Italian white dude, Massimo, who she, like, hates. She really wants to marry Matthew McConaughey, who's also white. But he's in fucking engaged to marry Fran, who is fucking hilarious. <laughs> I really like The Wedding Planner, but it's just funny that the main character is Jennifer Lopez. Italian, I'd be like, bitch, her name is Lopez. <laughs> um... I keep having random text messages from like 13 days ago pop up on the iPad. The iPad's really tripping. Didn't J-Lo also play Jewish in a movie once? Listen, like this girl just be playing whatever. I'm pretty sure her character in Enough is Jewish or something. Jessica Hubble was the artificial version of Rashida Jones. Names don't mean shit nowadays. Ariana Grande is Italian, another hoodwink. Spicy White's death engaged in political blackness. She was Jewish in the backup plan. Was that the one where she was Jewish? The backup plan was fucking funny. <laughs> the backup plan was fucking funny. She's Italian and enough. I know she's Italian in um, Gigli with Ben Affleck, and she's also Italian in The Wedding Planner. And I think she is Italian and enough. They called her, like, slim. And she was Jewish in the backup plan. Like I said, this bitch just be whatever. J-Lo just be pulling races and ethnicities out her back pocket. Like, I could be whatever you want me to be. Jessica Alba and Jennifer Lopez be straight race hopping. <laughs> and yeah, but like Jessica Alba like was first. I think she might have been like pulling that shit before Jennifer Lopez. Because Jessica Alba had the wool pulled over a lot of motherfuckers' eyes. J-Lo was from every continent in Africa. It's because the history of whiteness from 18th, 19th century. Italians and dark whites. Yeah. That's what I said about Jessica and Jennifer. They're also Latinx when it's convenient. What a privilege. Right. Slim is such a racially ambiguous name. Dude, and I don't even know if they ever say her real name in enough. Everybody just calls her Slim. 
And then she tries to find her real father, and her father is this, like, ethnically ambiguous looking dude. Like, he could be white, he could be Italian, he could be Jewish, he could be Latinx. But then her father, and they call her father, and what do they call him? They He, he also has a nickname where they call him, like, Nero or Artemis or something like that. And then she ends up, like, linking up with, like, I don't know. It was just, like, a lot of, like, racial ambiguity going on. A lot of, like, racial ambiguity going on. A lot. Jupiter. Yes, Ebony. That was his name. Jupiter. Her father's Jupiter. She's slim. We're not getting anyone's real name. It's all being left very racially up in the air as to, like, what race and ethnicity are these people? Like... And yes, every single person in the movie calls Jennifer Lopez slim. Even like her husband, like her husband calls her slim. All her friends call her slim. Like everybody calls her slim. And she calls her father Jupiter. That's his name, Jupiter. Because I remember when she goes to her father and asks him for money, she gives him this whole lecture about isn't Jupiter supposed to be like the most powerful of the gods and da 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 da. And I'm like, what race are these people supposed to be? What are these names? What is happening? Like, it's too much. <coughs> J-Lo is transracial <coughs> I see y'all also brought up Vin Diesel Yeah, Vin Diesel likes to do that shit too Vin Diesel has got me too at first Ben Affleck makes horrible movies Yeah Posers Posers Definitely posers J-Lo is exactly the same person as Cardi B. They're exactly the same. Somebody, I read something there, some meme that somebody had made that was like, all this energy people have for Jennifer Lopez, they need to like have the same energy for Cardi because they're exactly the same and Cardi wouldn't even have a career if it wasn't for J-Lo because J-Lo was the one that like got this whole wave off the ground in terms of like mu the music business. And they were like the same people that's talking so bad about J-Lo like love Cardi B when they're exactly the same. They're the same. They are exactly the same. Um, Vin Diesel. OMG, Vin Diesel was Italian in the Fast and the Furious season all this time. The Rock is biracial. The Rock is... I don't think... Vin Diesel is not biracial Vin Diesel is not part black I don't believe but The Rock actually is I think I thought that's why The Rock and Vin Diesel bump heads The Rock really is biracial his father's black like his father's like black as fuck too much trickery buffoonery foolery and fuckery going on J-Lo changes race as much as she changes clothes. And the synopsis for enough, they don't even give Slim a real name. Right! They never say her real name. They never say her real name. They only call her Slim. It's a little bit weird. Even when she's like, even when she, when her husband finds her and they leave the house and she's having the conversation with the daughter in her car She's like, you can't call me Slim anymore. I was like, what? She's like, oh, S Slim is gone. And that's when she says, like, you have to call me Aaron. Like, you have to call me Aaron now, whatever, whatever. Like, you can't call me Slim, this and this. And I was just like, but, like, Aaron is also not her name. Like, this is a made-up name. What is this bitch's real name? Is this how secret her identity is? Is even a secret from the audience? Vin Diesel was supposed to be Italian, Fast and the Furious, mind blown. I think in real life, Vin Diesel, wait, I thought Vin Diesel was biracial. I think Vin Diesel is Italian. Dwayne, that's The Rock, <laughs> is actually biracial. Um, damn, J-Lo and Cardi B are the same. What a harsh realization. Vin Diesel doesn't know his dad's heritage, I think. Dominic Toretto, he's Italian. 
all these ambiguous people playing Italians. I might be offended if I was Italian. Everyone is Italian. <laughs> Vin Diesel has stated that he's of ambiguous ethnicity. Vin Diesel said he doesn't know who his dad is, so he doesn't know if he's mixed with other things like black. Um... Mm. And out of sight, J-Lo played a Latina, but her father was white. <laughs> they playing games with the ambiguous people. Dominic Toretto's sister was the sister on the... Oh, um, you talk about Jordana Brewster. She was the sister on The Sopranos. Everybody is spicy white and totally black, too. <laughs> I have to go. Y'all are too much. <laughs> <laughs> Jayla was even credited as slim in the movie. Um, everyone is Italian. I'm Italian. <laughs> that was mad funny. Everybody's spicy white and totally black too. Like it's just like whatever you want to be, you can be. <laughs> Oh, really? In real life, Jordana Brewster is Portuguese? Mia? Damn, even Mia played an Italian. Everyone could be Italian. I didn't know Jordana Brewster was Portuguese in real life. Every time I look at her, I just remember that she was in the faculty with fucking Elijah Wood back in the day. That's all I think. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna go because y'all got me dying. We're gonna do Get Christy Love. We're gonna do Get Christy Love next week which I already have a link for, so I'll post it in the chat next week. So, well, something I do want to say that's, like, really interesting about The Rock, in a lot of his movies, The Rock always has at least one black parent, which I find to be really interesting. Like, I was watching Walking Tall the other day, and his father is black. And his, like, siblings... One of his siblings is fucking Zero from Holes and the other one is like some other fucking chick. Like, The Rock will give you a black parent in a movie. He had like a black mom and Gridiron Gang. He will give you like a dark skinned black parent, which I do think is interesting. I wonder if he like insists on that. Cause they didn't they like they don't have to he could just be like i'm italian <laughs> like it's very interesting to me that like a lot of the times when they show his parents he always has at least like one visibly black like dark-skinned parent i wonder if that is really because like in real life he has like a dark-skinned black parent okay so i'm gonna see you guys next week get chrissy love you say, yeah, it would be interesting. Get Chrissy Love next week. We have a link all ready to go. And it has been a fun chat. And I will see you guys next week. Peace out.